Hello and welcome to RSE Day 2021, a day for schools and families and organisations to learn and celebrate safe and healthy relationships. And it's so important that children and young people get a chance to learn about safe and healthy relationships and to do that in a way that's appropriate to them and to do it with teachers who are experienced and trained. And today we're going to be celebrating some of the ways in which we can do that in a really creative way. We've got a fantastic program of artists, and makers, writers, and poets, storytellers, people who are going to bring to you ideas for exploring uh, your relationships, your identity, who you are, and who you want to be. And we're going to be doing that throughout the day, brought to you from here in sunny Nottingham, but going out on our live stream TV all across the country. And we're delighted to be here again uh, since 2018. RSC Day has been celebrating safe and healthy relationships and we're doing it this year with support from our partners at Nottingham Challenge and also Discovery Education Health and Relationships who in partnership with Nottingham City Council are bringing you today's programme. Now I'm John and with me in the studio are my team. We've got Lewis, uh, we've got Rob, we've got Cathy and we've got Glenn, and we're going to be taking you through uh, a fantastic schedule of activities that you can join in with wherever you are. Take a minute to look around the room. Do you see any faces? Any faces like yours? Well, probably, but nobody's got a face exactly the same as yours. And that's because your face, like your identity, is uniquely yours. It's specially for you. And today we're going to be celebrating all the things which make you, you, and the kind of relationships that you want to have. And your voice and participation is really important today. So make sure that you've got something to work with, something to write, and maybe something to paint with. Make sure that you've got some uh, materials to use. Most importantly of all, make sure that you've got your imagination on. So, we're going to be looking at your work throughout the day. And you'll be able to contribute by going to our website, rseday.com, download the program for the day, if you haven't done already. All the links are there for all the activities that we're going to be doing, information about all the artists and all the activities. They're all there, rseday.com. Dot com. But you can also use Twitter to send us material. Use the hashtag RSE Day. And also you can send us material at rshe at nottinghamcity.gov.uk. But first, let's watch our welcome video. Welcome. 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 Hello and welcome. 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 Hello, welcome. 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 Hi everybody and welcome to the National Relationship and Sex Education Day. Have a great time. So, welcome, and our theme of faces is something that people have been exploring already, sending us material, and we're going to be featuring through our shout-outs uh, the kind of things that have been going on already 
as people have warmed up for RSE Day. And of course, during the day, you can send in your material and we'll do our best to feature you. So if you're in class at the moment, do some work, send it to us, uh, and we'll give you a big shout out and a big wave. Um, our timetable for today, well, it's action packed. I hope you can stay with us for as much of this as possible. Uh, coming up in the first part of the show, we're going to be having the big RSE Day assembly with our partners at Discovery Education health and relationships. They're going to be exploring the friendship tree, and we're going to be growing that friendship tree throughout the day. At 9.30, well, it's National Picnic Week, so we've got a family picnic art workshop with artist Katie Sandoval. And then the first of three live links today with King Edward VI School in Litchfield, and I'll be talking to some of the students at King Edward School about the things that they've been getting up to. At 10.05, our old friend Manjit Sahota will be here with a poem to celebrate faces on RSE Day. And then at 10.10, healthy relationships are going to be explored by artist Jacob Dines, who will be creating a mood board. And that's something you can do wherever you are, using materials and photographs and pictures to explore relationships. And then at 10.25, the first chance to see our Faces of RSE Day film, which has been specially made for today. Now, the second part of the morning, we'll be exploring the poetry of Lord Byron from his home at Newstead Abbey, close to Nottingham. And then the second of our live links as we go to Hampthwaite Primary School in Harrogate to find out what children have been up to there. We'll be doing celebration poems with Matty Lewis Miller, at 11 o'clock. And then at 11.25, you'll be able to make your own emotion cube. And that's another art craft activity that you'll be able to do. We'll be having another look at the faces of RSE Day. And then just before lunch, we'll be looking at the story of the lion and the mouse. Lunchtime is at 12, a chance for you to rest, eat, relax, and recover from a busy morning's creativity, and then get ready for the afternoon. As in the afternoon, we start with a reflection workshop, See Me for Who I Am, with our Discovery Education partners. At 13.30, we've got friendship sculptures with Elaine Winter, followed by another live link, this time with Oakfield School in Nottingham. Faces of RSE Day film gets another showing at 14.05. And then we'll be having a fantastic songwriting workshop with the Freedom Foundation. And to finish us off, Story time with Sid Sloan, the CBeebies favourite, comes to you at half past two. Uh, we'll have one more chance to look at the gallery before we say goodbye to you uh, and you can end the day looking at your work. Now then, a few shout outs before we go to Katie. Um, these are people who have been doing work already and they're going to feature on our map, which I'm going to show you a little bit later on. Um, Chesham Grammar School in London, They've been holding a Year 8 assembly on faces and recording videos of students talking about their RSHE lessons for an information film for new parents. Welcome Cheshire Grammar School. Heather Teachers Consent is also celebrating RSE Day. Thank you, Heather. Good to see you uh, getting involved. And meanwhile, pupils at Welbeck Primary School in Nottingham, they're joining in with the RSE Day live stream they're discussing friends and relationships. I'm going to give you a big wave to Chesham, to Heather Teachers Consent and Welbeck. Well done for joining in. I hope you have a fantastic day. We're going to be going to our friendship assembly. Enjoy. Good morning, everybody. My name is Christina. I'm from Discovery Education and I want to welcome you to the great RSE Day Assembly. This morning we're going to be talking about friendship. We're going to think about the question, what makes a good friend? How can we be good friends to each other? To do that we're going to watch a couple of films and we're going to hear from some children who've been working on friendships in their schools. But to make this a national assembly, we want to hear from all of you. So what we're going to do is grow a national friendship tree together. So what is a friendship tree? Well, we're going to go to a school who've been creating one in the classroom to find out. 
Hi, Elise. Oh, hi, Archie. What's that behind your back? Well, it's a friendship tree. Oh. Because we're best friends. Thanks. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that was my mum. Hi, mum. Yeah, she loves it. <laughs> um, it doesn't really look like much of a tree to me. I mean, what am I supposed to do with it? Oh, hey, this school has a friendship tree. Maybe they can help me out. Oh, there it is. OK, everyone, I hope that you've had a good lunchtime. We've got our visitor here now. Hi, Elise. Come inside and join us. We've been talking this morning about how to show good friendship and we've started to put together a little friendship tree. Well, thank you so much for letting me join you today. My friend Archie actually gave me a friendship tree and I was a bit confused and I didn't really know what to do with it, so this is really cool. The children have been learning about ways to show that they're a good friend. We've talked about lots of ideas and we started to think about them as leaves on a tree. Has anybody got any ideas for me? My friend helped me out with the last questions. And what did your friend do for you? She showed me the falls off, then they worked out the rest with some help. 12 divided by 3 is 4. Thank you, Abby. And Kai, can you tell me some ways? Help people when they are hurt. Are you okay, Samuel? No, I'm really. Should I get you to first aid? Yes, please. Well, everyone, I think we can see our tree's got lots and lots of leaves now. Some lovely ideas there. I still think it could do with some more. As you go around school today, I want you to see as many different ways as you can of being a good friend and see if we can get that tree really growing and full of leaves. Hey, you dropped yourself. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> this tree's looking amazing. So many leaves. Wow, you guys are all such great friends. This tree looks awesome. How do you all feel? Amazing! So being a good friend and making each other feel happy is the secret of how the friendship tree grows. Now I know what I need to do. Hi Archie. Oh, hey Elise. Uh, what happened to you? I was just speaking to my mum and you disappeared. Oh, I had to pop out. But I'm back now and I've got a surprise for you. Cool. <gasps> Ta-da! Oh, thanks Elise. I love it. You're welcome. I'm going to call you Terence. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. So there we are. A friendship tree is a tree that grows from all the good things that we do as friends. What would you put on the friendship tree? What would you do to make it grow? To get some ideas and inspiration, we're going to visit the school. This is Rose Hill School in Nottingham, and they have been making a special friendship film just for us and RSE Day. Let's take a look. Welcome to Rose Hill's friendship video. Today, we are saying nice words to our friends. Come on, friend. Let's go to see what our friends are doing at around school. Hello, friends. I'm going to pass you this, some nice words. Whoa. Bye, friends.
So these are the words that make a good friend. A respectful, nice, go to play, helpful, teamwork and sharing. Do you want to show yours? Ah. Uh -huh. Good. Like. Nice. Play. Thank you so much to all the children at Rose Hill School for helping us out and showing us what you have been working on. Thank you to Lauren, Tanaka, Hayden, Corey, Omarion, Frankie, Archie and Yusuf. I really loved seeing your work, hearing your great ideas and what a wonderful friendship wall you had outside. And this is exactly the kind of thing that we're trying to make today, but all of us who are watching this together. So we want to see your leaps. We want to hear your thoughts and ideas. So sit together, think about it in class. What are you going to put on your leaves? What will you share with us? To get some further ideas and inspiration, we're going to go to Cornerstone Academy. They've already done their leaves. They've already shared them with us. So we're going to see what some of the children have to say. A good friend is someone who can have fun with you. A good friend is where you help each other when they're hurt. A good friend is someone that helps you. A good friend is someone who you can rely on. Being a good friend means helping them when they get hurt. Thank you so much to Cornerstone Academy. I'm sure we all got some really good ideas for what to put on our own leaves. But before I show you how to share your leaves and share your thoughts to make this national friendship tree, we're just going to visit one more school. And this is a school that we've been working on how to solve friendship problems. So let's take a look on the good tips that they have. Mm. Mm. Donuts so delicious. Oh yeah, they are my favourite. Mm. Hey, I wanted that one. Mm. Too late, I got it first. That's not fair. You snooze, you lose. I think I might have upset Elise. What? Who said that? It's Tilly from Seventh Beach Primary School. We think you should come and visit because we have great ways to solve problems with you and your friends. Ooh, it's chilly out here. Glad I've got my coat on. So, hey, thanks for inviting me. So, what's this all about? Well, we're peer mediators, and this means we help children to get along at school. Well, how do you do that? We help when our friends fall out with each other, or if they be rude to each other, or if they say horrible things to each other. And if our friends won't play with each other. It seems like a great scheme in theory, but does it actually work in practice? So, Keegan, one of the peer mediators helped you. So, when I was tidying up the toys, three kids came up to me and started to knock everything down. Oh, that's not nice. So, a peer mediator told them to stop it and then told a the teacher. They got an adult involved and they helped to sort out the yes. situation. My friend came up to me and I asked her, can I play with you? And she said no, and then she started calling me names. And I said, and I, and I went and got a peer mediator, and they came over and they got both sides of our stories. We said sorry, and then we were both friends. Oh, yeah. that's great. If you do have a fallout with your friends, I've been getting some more tips from the mediators that might help you out. Don't talk at them, talk to them. Use a calm, warm voice and smile. Keep calm, try to stay relaxed, and make sure you're at the same level. Look at the person you're talking to. Listen carefully and nod and say yes, I see, or right, to show them that you understand what they are saying. You need to be fair and don't pick sides. Everything you sort out needs to be confidential. But remember, sometimes, like if your friends are getting involved in bullying or physically fighting, you'll need to get an adult involved. I think the main thing I've learned is that when we fight, we should always try and see things from the other person's perspective. So maybe I should have shared that donut with Elise. Hi Elise, I got this for you. Oh, thanks Archie, but you have it. No, you. No, you. Oh, you donut. Great. Now we've learned lots and lots about what a friendship tree is ways to solve friendship problems and we've heard from Rose Hill and Cornerstone Academy about their good ideas for how to be a good friend. So let's put all of this together 
and let's now start to make our own leaves and share them to grow our national friendship tree. We have created a virtual wall or virtual tree. As you can see, all the leaves that we've seen in the films are already on this wall, so the tree has already started to grow. But now I want to hear from you. We want to see all of your thoughts. So if you go to this wall, you'll find the link on the RSC Day webpage, and there's also a QR code that you can use to easily access this board. Just by clicking on the pink button, you can type in your ideas, or if you're taking pictures of your leaves, you can just upload them and share them with us. And that way, we're going to be able to see the tree grow throughout this day. I cannot wait to check in throughout the day and see how this tree is progressing. So let's try to make it really big, green, wonderful tree built especially for RSE Day by all of us. Thank you so much for taking part. Enjoy the rest of RSE Day. There are so many fun activities happening throughout the day. I'm sure you'll have a brilliant day. And I cannot wait to see all your leaves and watch our tree grow. Thank you. And I'm your host for RSE Day 2021, coming to you from Nottingham, but going out across the country on live stream. And today is the day where we learn about and celebrate safe and healthy relationships. We do that with schools, with families, with organisations. And of course, it's all about what you're doing today and what you're creating, what you're making. And we want to see what you're doing. So, Make sure that wherever you are and whatever you're doing, we can have a look at the work too. And you can do that by sending us your stuff on Twitter. Use the hashtag RSE Day and we'll pick it up. Or go to our website, rseday.com, and you can find out how to send in the information that you want to send us. And we'll try and feature it on our show. This afternoon, we're going to be doing a gallery of all the work that's coming in throughout the day. And we've already got stuff coming in. So if you want to be included in that, we'll do our best to put your work on our gallery show. And also, see here, we've got our uh, map of RSE Day. And at the moment, it's a, it's a little bit blank. There's not a lot going on. However, some of the schools and organisations that are doing work are already here on our, on our map. And uh, as we go through the day, I want to fill this full of colour. So send in, wherever you are, things to RSE Day, uh, and we'll put you on the map. Now, the friendship tree that the uh, Discovery Education team were building with schools in the assembly, you can take part in that too. To do that, you'll need our timetable for the day, rseday.com, if you don't have one already, and all the information there of how to put friendship leaves for the friendship tree onto the Padlet. Very easy to do. Just include the name of the school and the first name of a student on the leaf if you want us to give you a shout out. Put that onto the Padlet and together we're going to build a fantastic friendship tree throughout the day. Now, the timetable for this morning again, the first part of the day, let's take a quick look at that. Coming up before 10.30, uh, 9.30, we have a family picnic art workshop with artist Katie Sandoval. And then we have a live link with Edward the Sixth School in Litchfield, that's going to be the first of our three live links talking directly to students about the things that they're getting up to. Really looking forward to that. Um, shortly after 10 o'clock, we see the return of our old friend Manjit Sahota from Poets Against Racism, who will be reading for us the RSC Day Faces poem that he's specially written for today as part of our theme, All About Faces. That's followed by a fantastic artistic workshop with uh, Jacob Dines, who's going to be doing a mood board exploring 
healthy relationships. Uh, and then we'll be going to uh, the rest of the program and the RSE Day Faces film is going to get its first showing. So, so much to look forward to and I hope you're enjoying it already. I hope you've got what you need for today. I said earlier, maybe you need something to write with, something to draw with. Maybe you also need some equipment to, to draw on, some materials. Most importantly, you need some imagination, some creativity. That's going to get you through. Uh, let's do a few shout-outs, shall we? Um, pupils at Buckingham Primary School in Hull, they're creating love hearts and collating them together to highlight their positive aspects. They're also joining in with the RSA Day live stream. So uh, welcome to you, pupils at Buckingham Primary School. Thanks for joining us. Um, pupils at Claydon Primary School in Ipswich, well, they're taking part in activities today too. So hello to you at Claydon. And Year 7 students at Heathcote Secondary School in East London, well, they're creating a friendship wall with ideas, comments, and notes all about what a healthy relationship is. And that's the theme of the day, isn't it? Um, they're creating a student video too about the importance of healthy RSE. We'd really like to find out more about that, Heathcote. Do send us some information on the, uh, use the hashtag RSE Day and put that onto Twitter for us, or go through RSE day.com. Copy School in Derbyshire, they've got a whole school focus on friendship. They've been doing that this term and they're celebrating today. So they'll be working with others, helping their friends, accepting others for who they are, and they're going to be talking about how you can be brave enough to be yourself. That sounds fantastic, Coppice. They're going to feature in our Faces of RSE Day film. You'll be able to see that later on in the program. Right, I think we've got a couple of minutes, so I'm going to remind you that if you want to submit work, you can also do it through the rshe at nottinghamcity.gov.uk website or through Twitter, hashtag RSE Day, and we've got a team, we've got Glenn, we've got Kathy, and we've got Catherine back at base, and they're going to be putting together all your submissions. And then this afternoon, we're going to be featuring that on our gallery show. And of course, you can go down and download that information from rsedae.com, and that will tell you how to make sure that you get your work included. Now, coming up in a couple of minutes' time, the first of our uh, artist videos. We asked a number of local artists in Nottingham to create for us different ways to explore the theme of faces and the theme of safe and healthy relationships for RSE Day. Uh, we had some poets, we've got some writers, uh, we've got some music and music making and storytelling. But first, we're going to be doing a workshop with local artist and teacher, Katie Sandoval. Now, Katie uh, is a practitioner in the, the local area around Nottingham. And she also teaches in a local school. She paints and draws, and she creates beautiful oil paintings. And although Katie lives in Nottingham, originally she's from Mexico City. She came to the UK as a child, but she never forgot her upbringing, and she uses the memories of her time in Mexico uh, to inspire her pictures. So the sights, the sounds, the smells, the colours, the landscapes of Mexico are all part of Katie's work. Kate is going to be using some of those inspirations now as she takes us through an artistic family art picnic, showing you how you can use art to create togetherness with the family around a theme that we all really love more than anything else sometimes, and that's food. Okay, let's join Katie now. Hello, welcome to RSE Day. My name's Katie and I'm an artist. And today, we're going to be making an artwork inspired by the theme of the family. We're going to be thinking about all the positive things that parents and carers do for us. We'll start off with a warm-up activity for five minutes and then over 15 minutes I will teach you step by step how to complete this artwork. We're going to be creating a colourful piece of work inspired by the theme of a family picnic. A nice day out that celebrates positive family relationships. So let's start off by thinking about what makes for positive family relationships. 
I want you to imagine what a happy family picnic might look like. What might it feel like? Where would you go? What would the weather be like? What foods would you like to eat? What games would you like to play? How would you feel? Now think about the people going to the picnic. How do they make it a positive and happy family occasion? How should they behave? So now we are ready to start with our warm-up activity. You will need the RSC Day Art Activity Family Picnic Sheet, um, which features three different baskets. And in each one of these baskets, we're going to write down some answers to some questions that will get you thinking about positive family relationships. So for number one, list three things that parents or carers do to look after you. Let's explore this in more detail. If you think about a whole 24 hours and the things that you might do during a typical day, how many of those things involve your parent or carer helping you? Getting ready for school, so having breakfast and organising your bag, making a packed lunch, all these practical things, you may require help. But then there are other things such as talking to you in a way that helps you feel good about your day. For example, talking through any worries you might have about school such as homework or a test. So what your parents and carers do and say is an important part of family relationships. And now for number two, list three positive family behaviours. So what behaviours make a positive family environment? Let's think about specific behaviours that are positive. What things do family members do to make us feel happy, calm and confident? What sort of things might they say to make us feel good? We all like to be praised. It's nice to be told when we've done something well or something that is appreciated. Hearing the word thank you means that our actions and our feelings are considered. When is the last time that you thanked your parent, carer or another family member? And have they thanked you? So now I write down three things that a person can say to create a good family atmosphere. So now we have thought through some positive family behaviours, let's think about those in terms of how these might work on a day out. I want you to think about how a family can work together to organise a picnic. Organising a day out is quite a lot of work. You might start by writing a list of things to do. There are decisions to be made, food to prepare, gathering things that might be useful such as a football, sun creams or a rug to sit on and so on. It will involve some skills that we all have. Communicating, planning, time management. Maybe some research and food preparation. Not everyone is good at all these things, but even so, a family can work together, help each other to make something like a day out into a positive occasion. Now let's think about making an artwork inspired by the theme of a family picnic. As an artist, I like to start off by thinking about the theme for my artwork. Here's an artwork that I've created inspired by the theme of family picnics. What would make a family picnic a happy occasion? Well, it brings together a, a number of nice things. For example, being outside in a park or an outdoor space is lovely. You're surrounded by nature, trees, grass, flowers and so on. And as an artist, you can take these elements and use them in your artwork. Seeing the sky and the nice warm sunshine could help us to feel happy and relaxed, and it is good for our well-being. 
As an artist, the idea of warmth is a good starting point for colours. My aim was to create a happy and colourful image by the way that I have used colours and patterns, but also by the objects I've chosen to include in the picture, objects that have happy associations. Let's look at this picture in more detail and at the objects that I have included. First of all, there is a patterned rug in the middle of the space. I have used bright orange and linked this up to a donut. What are your favourite foods? What foods would you want to take on your picnic? I have also included some watermelon and orange juice. These foods are particularly summery and good to share. What foods do you enjoy sharing with your family? Do you think sharing foods is a good way to build family relationships? Can you think of the foods that you have on special occasions such as birthdays or religious festivals? When you create your own artwork, think about the foods and the happy feelings that you associate with them. It could be any food that you like, pizza, samosas, sushi, patties or sandwiches or salads, anything. There are so many to choose from. So let's get started with the artwork. We're going to use a sheet of A4 paper to make the border. The first step is to create a border or a frame for your picture. I have decided to create an irregular border with different shaped edges. A frame or a border is a nice way to define a space. At home we have different rooms in the house for different purposes. One of the things that parents and carers do for us is to create a home. When we go for a day out, they look out for us and keep us safe in different types of spaces such as parks or the seaside or in town. For step two, now it's time to sketch in or trace your picnic rug. And you start off by sketching out the outline and then the elements of the landscape. Place your rug where you want it inside of the border. Why is the rug important in this picture? The picnic rug is what we use to pull together the picnic to display the foods and to keep them protected from the grass and as a comfortable surface for us to sit on. It doesn't have to be a rug, it can be a sheet, blanket or any practical thing to sit on. Togetherness, practicality and comfort. These are some of the qualities that help to create good family relationships. Next time you sit on a rug, anywhere like the sofa or in a car with your family, think about how important being together is and what you can do to make that a happy space. Step three is food for the picnic. Let's think about some food items for your picnic. When I go on a picnic, I like to include some of my favorite foods. And I also like to include treats that my family enjoy too. 
It's sometimes helpful to think about food in terms of sweet things and savoury things, cooked things and uncooked things. I like fruit salads. I like pasta and some spicy things like samosas as well as cakes. What sort of foods does your family like to eat? What are your favourite foods? Food brings people together and this makes food an important part of family relationships. Your parents and carers help to provide food for you and they can teach you about cooking and looking after yourself. So now you are ready to add some foods to your artwork, you can draw or trace these out from the image sheets. I've included a range of foods, but you'll have your own ideas so you can add those in too. They can be any size or any colour. Be creative! let's add some food in so I'm going to now you'll notice some of this food is enormous in comparison to the scale of this but that doesn't matter that's absolutely fine so I'm going to choose some food here I'm going to put, put some grapes onto the rug and again here we've just got the outline of the grapes I can add in some of the shapes within the outlines later on um, I've got a lovely looking drink looks like a strawberry strawberry smoothie or something in a jam jar because this is a DIY picnic you can prepare this yourself and with the help of your family of a fruit here okay and then I'm going to add in the watermelon I might put this somewhere hmm. you do have to move the sheet around to see see where is best So now we're at step four. This is where you will choose um, the colours that you're going to use. We all love seeing and using colours and colours often have different meanings for different people. Everyone has a favourite colour. Mine is turquoise because it reminds me of a tropical sea. What's your favourite colour? When you think about your family, is there a colour that reminds you of them? Colours are linked to emotions so sometimes we talk about feeling bright or feeling blue. What colours can you use in your drawing to create a happy image? Everyone sees and enjoys different colours. You and your family are unique, so create a unique colour scheme for you. I like to use hot colours with a few accents of cold colours. For example, red, orange, pink as my hot colours, or blue, pale green, or sky blue for cold colours. Ain't gonna stretch. Well, can I put in them? And I sort out the camera. Just say me. Yeah.
the final step, step 5, is adding further detail and further pattern. For this it's good to use a black fine line pen or a felt tip or, or a pencil to add outlines and pattern. So to sum up, what you will need to do to create your picnic themed artwork is the following. You will use the resource image sheets to help you draw and trace your images. You'll need A4 paper, colouring pencils, a fine line pen if you have one, and a pencil. If you have watercolours, you can also use those to add the bigger areas of colour. Just remember not to use too much water. So step one, you start off by creating a border around the outside of the page. Step two, you draw the picnic rug. You can trace that from the sheet. And then you can start adding different foods and other fun items such as things to play with, for example, the football. Again, you can draw those freehand off the sheet or you can trace those through. Step three, choose the colours you're going to use, so not every colour, but a selected number of colours, and start putting the colour in carefully. And then step four, um, add the detail and outlines using a fine line black or even a dark colour pen. And that's the finished artwork. Welcome back to RSE Day 2021, the day when we learn about and celebrate safe and healthy relationships with schools, families and organisations. And already we're getting so much of your work coming in, celebrating safe and healthy relationships through a variety of different creative ways. It's fantastic. Um, let's have a quick look at our uh, friendship map, which is growing here. Uh, and we've got all sorts of activities going on. Some shout outs to give you. Uh, Team Griffin at Hampswaite uh, Primary School. Well, they're year three and four children. They're working with teachers, Mrs. Borchard and Mrs. Hayfield. Um, fantastic. Their work, we'll be able to see some of that after lunch because I know that they've already sent us lots of things for the gallery. I'm also going to give a shout out to everyone at Cornerstone Academy. Hi there. Thanks for taking part. Uh, and also um, Dale Hill Primary in Ipswich. Fantastic. We've got a couple of Ipswich schools already on the uh, on the map here. I've got some more shout outs for you. Um, that's the, yes, Ladywood Primary School. Well, the whole school, they're getting involved in RSC activities. Uh, Ladywood work as a community, working with families and children as a whole together. That's really exciting. I want to see some of your work, Ladywood. Hope you can send it to us. Um, now then, Holy Family Catholic Primary. Well, they're celebrating diversity by focusing on the importance of smiling and welcoming each other. That's a universal action, isn't it, smiling? Uh, well, everybody understands a smile, so really good that you're exploring that. And the children are going to be learning about how to greet each other in one of the 27 languages spoken at the school. Fantastic. I'd like to find out how to greet in 27 different languages, wouldn't you? Um, the It Happens education team, well, they're really busy. They're sharing their faces and thoughts about healthy relationships on Instagram and Twitter throughout the day. So I'm looking forward to seeing some of those later from the It Happens team. And meanwhile, at Deanwood and Unity Academy here in sunny Nottingham, they're working in community spirit how to treat each other with respect and kindness. The staff and students are also running a charity event for children with cancer. Good work. And meanwhile, pupils at Westglade Primary, also in Nottingham, they're drawing portraits of a classmate to create a large display. They'll be discussing their unique and positive characteristics. That sounds like uh, really good work. Now, we've got our map of all the activities and we're putting all the schools and organisations on here. This is just going to grow and grow. But also growing is our friendship tree. And I know we've already had lots of submissions of leaves for the friendship tree on the Padlet that you can access 
through rseday.com. Now, we've got some more links to share with you. Don't forget to use our Twitter feed. Hashtag RSE Day is, is what you need to put on. If you put that on your submission, we'll find it, uh, however else you get things. Uh, you can also send an email to rshe at nottinghamcity.gov UK. Uh, either way, we'll get your work. And then, of course, as I mentioned, if you go to www.rseday.com, then you'll be able to uh, find all the resources that you need and use those to submit your work. And we'll be looking at that work later on in our gallery show. Uh, Katie's Family Art Picnic was the first of our artist submissions. We've got more coming up. We've got Matty, we've got Jacob, we've got Poetry, Manjit. Um, but we've also got some live links where I can speak directly to students at schools who are taking part in RSE Day. And, and I'm hoping that in a few seconds or so, we're going to be joined by students from uh, King Edward VI School in Litchfield, who have been uh, working hard on relationship education uh, throughout the school year and are also going to be doing things today for RSE Day. King Edward VI School is one of the oldest schools in the UK uh, and has a, a long history also has a, a really broad curriculum of activities, sport and science, uh, English. It, it has a whole range of different things that it does well. So I'm hoping that we're going to be joined shortly. But uh, my producer is currently shaking his head and just saying, not yet, uh, which presumably means there's a, a bit of a, an issue with, with the link. And that's what happens when you're doing live stream TV. Um, we, we kind of just have to roll with it a bit. So hopefully you can roll with us. Uh, and meanwhile, uh, you can just get on with doing some stuff in class uh, that, you've, that you've been inspired by, by Katie's Art Picnic, or any of the other themes that we're exploring today on RSE Day. And I'm going to give some shout outs while we wait. I've got a, a whole list of them. Uh, if you want to be uh, shouted out to, you can also um, you can also send us a, a request for a shout out. And uh, Kathy's about to hand me a load more shout outs. Thank you, Kathy. That's wonderful. Um, here we go. Let me give you a few of these. And, and these are just classes and students all around the country who are taking part. Uh, when I give you a shout out, can you give it a big cheer in your class wherever you are? Okay, I want to hear you loud and clear coming through the TV. Uh, uh, the first one is for Backfield School in Yorkshire. Well done, Backfield. Thanks for taking part. Um, Westwood School, the year three, four and five children are taking part. And that's Westwood School in Leeds. Welcome and hello, Westwood. Thanks for taking part today. Uh, we've got the Chestnut class at Old Baseford School. That's just around the corner from us. I know Old Baseford well. Fantastic to have you on board. Um, thanks, Chestnut class. Give yourselves a big cheer. Um, we've also got St. Joseph's Primary taking part. Uh, hopefully all of you at St. Joseph's are, are watching on the live stream today. So thank you for joining. Um, year five and six children at St. Wilfred's Church of England School. Uh, they're taking part too. So it's really great to have all the children from St. Wilfred's. I hope you're enjoying it and I hope you're all creating something and sending it to us. Uh, we're going to do our best to feature uh, as much of your work as possible. If for any reason we don't get to show it on the show, it will be there for the gallery. You'll be able to go on to rseday.com and check it out. Uh, Regency High School in Worcester, big hello to you. Uh, thanks for being with us. I think we're almost ready to join King Edward School, Sixth School in Litchfield. And um, if, we, if we are, that'll be fantastic. And there we go. Wonderful. Hello, everybody. Welcome to RSE Day. Uh, I hope you can hear me. Can, I, can we hear you? Great stuff. Okay. Uh, if you can just shout up a bit. Uh, that would be great. And uh, I'm John, and I'm the host for RSE Day. And I can see, I think, do you want to introduce yourselves to everybody? Uh, Lauren, I'm Archie. Hi, Archie. Hi, <laughs> um, I'm Mrs. Weaver, and I'm the RSE lead teacher here at King Edwards. I'm Lillian, and I'm the I'm Charlotte, and I'm the 
Lillian and Charlotte Archie and Mrs. Weaver. Fantastic. Okay, so uh, I guess first of all, it would be good to hear from somebody um, about what is it about the school um, which helps you learn about relationships throughout the school year? What sort of things do you do as a school that, that helps you understand uh, and develop your relationships? Well, we have a lot of support and like, supporting with learning and generally the teachers are highly supportive and answering questions. Um, the school is pretty lively, we're pretty open to each other and we've had in tutors, we've had talks about talking to teachers if you're not employees or anything, or you've got your friends, you've got your family, etc. things like that. Um, we do our PSHE sessions um, every two weeks. Um, uh, everyone does it, um, uh, and we have uh, recently we've done about friendships, and they show video scenarios of like um, uh, relationships, and teachers explain how um, to like be in a good relationship, what not to do, um, and overall they're just really good about it. Really. That's really interesting, Archie. And do you think that the students enjoy that? And do you think they benefit from it? Uh, yeah, I do. Um, I'd say I benefit from it, really. Um, yeah, the students do. Um, Mrs. Weaver, uh, likes is an RE teacher, also uh, a research yeah. teacher as well. Um, and I know Mrs. Weaver really talks highly about it. So, fun to learn. Uh, enjoyable but also um, helps you develop and helps you grow that sounds really positive what sort of activities have you been doing today or what are you planning to do for RSE day so um, this morning um, most of the form groups have taken part in our faces um, the faces quiz that we did so we have lots of famous faces and um, the children have all uh, put in their responses to that um, we have done some portraits. We should quite the portraits as well. I think don't we do the art portraits? Yeah. You can express express yourself and your interests and your friends, etc. I even did one myself, but I've yet to hand it in. <laughs> <laughs> but it's basically a portrait of yourself, and you can add your hobbies, your friendships, your family, your friends, generals, your pets, and exploit and show yourself and. Basically, express yourself in the portrait. You can have colours, patterns, anything that helps you feel confident in yourself. And Charlotte, we've done the RSC Day cards as well. We'll talk about those. Um, <laughs> so, like, um, we just put in cards and like, things like that. Um, I think it's like to do with relationships with happy about life and stuff. And it's like, about it. Um, yeah, and we have set these all as well um, on the RC day, which has been changed over the years. Ago. And I'm pretty sure in the school when we have RE, I've been close to this as well. That sounds great. I, I really like the sound and your. Um uh, your expressions project uh, maybe that's something you can share with us uh, and tell us how to do it because today is also about inspiring others um, and and helping other people find new ways to explore relationships so uh, maybe you could write that up as a little kind of project send it to us uh, and then other schools could pick it up that would be great but we, I guess we'd also like to see some evidence of the work that you're doing so we can put it in our gallery space so have you have you got any plans to send us some work yeah so we'll, we're going to send you over some of the work that we've got we've also got some poems that some of your sevens have written about relationships as well so they looked at a poem by Caroline Duffy um, and um, then they wrote poems as in response to that about what love is like and, 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 and what a good relationship looks like that's great. Now, Mrs. Okay. Weaver. The other thing we've done is, do you want to talk about the video that we did that the librarians did with the places? Uh, uh, basically, we um, teach them students to uh, uh, find books with like faces on. So, this one uh, is more Sartaki. Um, and basically, we've got students and teachers. Like, kind of like put their face like that. So it looks like that's the face, that's the 
Okay, yeah, very clever. I like that a lot. Um, Mrs. Weaver, can I ask you, from the point of view of the staff, um, do the staff learn from the young people when you do activities like RSE Day? Absolutely. So it's been, um, it's been really good this year in that we've had uh, particularly the, the nominations, the number of staff that have nominated students, they've noticed the students who are really positive in their relationships. Um, and I think that's been a really important part of the sort of thinking and learning about what our relationships are like here at school. Um, it's really lovely to hear Archie and and, you know, and Charles sort of talk about the PSHE because we've invested a lot of time here as a school in that um, to build those good relationships so that the tutors are, are the best place to know their people so that we can really celebrate what our people's are like um, and to work on friendships within, within school because we all know that the basis for great relationships with adults is how you understand those relationships as a, as a student. So staff um, have been really inspired by it. I've had loads of uh, questions this morning about what we're doing. Um, I know we've got some classes that might be joining us to watch this as well as we're on here. So it's been, it's been really good, yeah. Really good. Brilliant to hear the whole school learning together as a, as a school family. Um, we, we, we've got time just for one more uh, little thing that I was hoping you'd be able to tell me, Charlotte, and Lillian and Archie. Um, Obviously, there's so many great things happening at King Edward VI School, but uh, could you sum up the school in, in, in one word for me, each of you, uh, and then maybe uh, Mrs. Weaver can, can finish us off with, with her word. How would you describe the experience of, of being at King Edward VI School? I think learning uh, you know, is very supportive. So, like, you know, tell supportive? Supportive. Really encouraging. 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 Yeah. And Archie? Uh, I'm excited because you were raised uh, outside to come to school. You never like scared to come to school. Fantastic. Supportive, encouraging and exciting. I don't think you can top that, Mrs Weaver, can you? Uh, just for me, I, I just think it's uh, it's just lovely. It's just a lovely place to work. We've got some fantastic students, we've got some fantastic staff. Um, and it's just lovely to hear that from our students. So, yeah, it's just Wonderful. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. It's been a real pleasure to have you. Um, I hope you enjoy the rest of RSE Day. Good luck, and we really look forward to seeing your work come in and sharing it with everybody uh, in this afternoon's gallery. Thank you, everybody. Take care. Have a great day. Bye. Bye-bye. Hey, King Edward the Sixth School. In Litchfield, there, wonderful, great to get right into the start of the of the uh, of the day and get into the class and get into the school and find out what's going on. Right now, we go to our next item, uh, which is I'm really delighted to uh, introduce um, for RSE Day 2021, a poem by um, our friend Manjit Sahota, uh, entitled Faces. Welcome to RSE Day. I hope you have a fantastic day. Here's a poem. It's called Give the Face Respect. What's with the face? The one that's out of place, the one that wears a frown that's sometimes looking down. Lift up your head, shoulders back instead. Proud to be seen is healthy, a chance to take a selfie. Smile with your eyes and don't look surprised because everybody's face has its rightful place. Grin from the chin, people will join in. Beam from your ears and get rid of all your fears. Follow your nose until the feeling grows. Speak from the heart. Yes, that's the way to start. This earth that is blue is made up of me and you. So make space for each other, for your sister and your brother. Learn to love your face, the one you can't replace. So come rain or shine, I think I'll stick with mine. You see, in everybody's face, you'll find the human race. So all bullies we reject. Give the face respect. Give the face respect. I like it, Manjit. Something to remember during the day. We're using faces as our theme to explore safe and healthy relationships. That's what we're learning about. 
That's what we're celebrating, schools and families and organisations across the country today on RSE Day 2021. Wherever you are, welcome and I hope you're having a really good day. It's great to have you with us. Uh, you're telling us lots and lots of uh, things that you're doing uh, across the country. Uh, I've got some shout outs for you just to keep you updated about what's happening maybe inspire you if you're doing something in class now uh tell us about it and we'll give you a shout out too kathy in the production area is rapidly sending me lots of uh, uh activities that are going off um jaden and jacob j squad uh, at Nottingham City School. They're active on RSE Day. Jaden and Jacob, well done. Great to have you with us. Um, we've also got Lady Elizabeth Hastings Primary School in Castleford in Yorkshire. They're creating a family tree of their school family. Excuse me. Um, we've also got Iskulti Koch, a special school in Wales, are hosting a We Need to Talk Day. That sounds fabulous. It's a chance for pupils, staff and parents to explore the new Welsh curriculum and take part in activities linked to this. Books Beyond Worlds. Well, they're giving away a digital taster pack of their wordless books to support the delivery of the RSHE curriculum. And this is particularly suited to uh, learners with special educational needs and disabilities. Uh, you can find out more from their website, booksbeyondwords.co.uk. UK Speech and Language Therapist Pride Network, well, they're sharing their hashtag Faces of SLT on Twitter with thoughts about good RSE and the value of speech and language therapists in the area. And classes at Woodland School in Nottingham are also following the RSED live stream today and they're taking part in activities. Hello to everybody at Woodlands. Great to have you on board. Now, we're going to go to our next artist, who is Jacob Dines, who is going to be exploring relationships with a technique used by Jacob and other creators that really helps bring out your ideas and imagination and capture some of the key themes uh, around healthy relationships. He's going to be making a mood board. So if you're ready, wherever you are, to do something creative again, uh, make sure that you've got some space, make sure that you've got some things to work with, uh, and follow Jacob as he takes us on his healthy relationships and mood board activity. Enjoy. <laughs> Hello everyone, I hope you're having a great RSE day today, I know I am. My name is Jacob and I'm an artist with experience in the areas of sculpture and collage as well as being a campaigner for various social issues. For those reasons I'm really looking forward to showing you how to do, do this task today. Uh, I think we're going to have a lot of fun together. What I'm going to be showing you how to do is how to create a mood board around the theme of healthy relationships using the images I've collected. Now, before we get started, I'm going to show you show you about the materials I'm going to be using. We've got scissors and glue here, obviously, which is things you're going to need for this kind of task. A nice bit of red card I'm going to be sticking stuff onto and the images I've collected for the task. Now with the images. It, it needs to be made clear that these images are images that uh, are close to me. These images contrast relationships in my life. So they will be different from the images you're going to be choosing, the images you're going to be working with. Because those images will obviously contrast to you. They will represent images uh, of that represent relationships in your life. So there's going to be a big difference there. Also, it needs to be made clear that some of these images I'm going to be working with today uh, represent bad relationships and some represent good relationships. I chose to do that because I felt having a contrast on the mood board uh, would, is the best way of really highlighting good relationships because if you see a bad relationship you can easily identify what is a good and safe relationship. Now, now that we've got all that introduction out of the way let's get the, down to the fun stuff. First off, 
does the cutting out. When it comes to cutting out, you can leave a slight border around the image, uh, or you can cut out right to the line of the image like I'm doing here. It really is down to you, it's a choice. Whichever you feel most comfortable with, that's what you do. And either way though, it's just best, just be careful and you'll be fine. You, if you're careful, you'll get a nice image cut out like I have there. Here are some images I cut out earlier. I didn't think you'd want me to see me just cutting out loads of images. First image I'm going to st stick down is one of the biggest. I suggest you start the, the same way because that way you can layer the images up because if you want to overlap lap them it's best to start with the bigger images first. Overlapping them is a choice but a, a choice but I, I'm going to be overlapping my images today. My biggest images, image is an image from the film Tangled which is a reimagining of the story of Rapunzel. For those of you who don't uh, know, Rapunzel is a story about a uh, witch locking up a girl with really long hair in a tower, so classic fairy tale kind of stuff. And I think the story really represents uh, good relationships and bad relationships, because we have, obviously, the witch locking a girl up in a tower, bad relationship and an unsafe relationship and we can, can, can we can classify that that is uh, a, a breaking boundaries that are important but we also have good relationships like in the film uh, Rap Rapunzel character has a relationship with uh, Gecko she has the Brave Prince character the Brave Prince character's daughter uh, horse so good relationships here we have these uh, characters help the Rapunzel character get out of a really unsafe relationship. So I'm sh I know there are examples in my life where people helped me w uh, in tough situations when I needed it. So that's an example of a healthy relationship. When it comes to gluing... Uh, you don't need to go overboard. Uh, a little will go a long way. You just need to put a bit on and start spreading. Like I said, you don't want to overload the glue. We don't want too much glue on our image, do we? Now, like I said, I'm going to be overlapping my images today, but when it comes to the border, you, you always have a, uh, have a choice. You can either go like this, leaving a slight border, border or you could uh, go o over, over and then cut away afterwards. Again, it's really all your choice. It's what you most want to do with your mood board. The next biggest image I have here have is an image of Winnie the Pooh and Winnie the Pooh's friends. Specifically, the reason why I chose uh, this image was for the character of Eeyore. For those of you who aren't familiar with Winnie the Pooh, uh, Eeyore is a character who gets very sad about a lot of things. It's just, uh, it's just who Eeyore is, but his Friends are always there to be be there for him when he needs them. But here's the most important, important, important thing, which I think illustrates why this is a good and healthy relationship. They never try to make E or B ha happy. They're always just there for him when they needs uh, when he needs them, which is a, a, a healthy relationship because. It really meant something for me, for me in my life, this image, because I know there have been times when I felt sad about whatever, 
and I had friends and I had family who were just there for me. I didn't need them to try and do whatever to make me happy. I just needed somebody to be there for me and listen to what I was feeling at the time, which was what I think you get with the ER image and what is represented. So we have a good, healthy relationship here. Like I said, it's your choice whether you want to overlap the images, but if you do overlap the images, I suggest you do it like how I've just done it. I overlap, overlap this the Winnie the Pooh image with the Rapunzel image, but I overlapped it uh, uh, over bits of the image, Rapunzel image that I didn't mind, mind about, so you still have the use of both images. So if you do overlap images, I suggest you do it like that. Next, I have an image of some geese with presumably what I'm imaging, uh, image of their children. I chose this image because I feel like this really feels like a family kind of image, don't you think? It, it, you look at this image and you see family. And I know family have always been a really safe relationship for me in my life. Because whenever I needed help, my family were always uh, always there for me. So for me, a safe relationship is family. And I wanted an image that represented family. Yeah, again we see how I layered the image moving up, keeping the important stuff with Winnie the Pooh, but layering the images so I have a, 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 good, a good contrast between all of the different images. Now we have an image here representing the story of Hansel and Gretel, which is again, I think, uh, an image that represents uh, good and bad bad uh, relationships. We have the witch that, well, kidnapped them with the idea of eating them, so unhealthy relationship. We can definitely say that was crossing boundaries. But we also have a good relationship because we have the relationship between the brother and the sister because that's a good sibling relationship. They're two siblings who very much had each other's back in a very difficult situation. And I, wa I wanted an image that represented good sibling relationships because I have a brother and there have been times times in my life we, he was there for me when I really needed him. So good, healthy relationship there for you. The blue ball's really starting to come out now, I feel. Next we have this image, which is an image I got off the internet of just generally a friendship group. And I just wanted to have an image of friends because friends are healthy relationships, aren't they? I, I, I know I've had friends in my life who really helped me out. And also, like the Winnie the Pooh image, they also understood what I needed. They understood uh, the boundaries of the friendship, didn't try to get, move into areas where I was uncomfortable, uh, n never tried to get me anything to do I didn't want to do. They were real friends. That's a real friendship relationship. So something, uh, something where I was safe, safe and uh, cared for, and where they, were, they in turn were safe and cared for because... With friends, you have give and take. They're there for you when uh, you need them, and you're there for them when they, they need you. We have a, another image of uh, friends here. 
and the, these two characters just generally struck me as a friend, friendly image. So again, it's about fr- friends and about being there for fr- friends. It's good. To, it's good to have friends. If you notice here, I. Uh, Stuck out, stuck this image with friends over the witch character in the Hansel and Gretel image, so we still have the Hansel and Gretel thing. I think it's, it's good. It's good. Like I said, I wanted bad a few examples of bad relationships to have the contrast between the good relationships, but I really wanted to concentrate on the good relationships because we want to be positive here, don't we? Finished uh, the mood board, and I think it looks quite good, don't you? We have a good a good example of a, a healthy relationship mood board here. We, we have the images of uh, Rapunzel, Winnie the Pooh, Winnie the Pooh, Eeyore, Hansel and Gretel, various friendship stuff. So I, I look at this image and I see a mood board that represents uh, the good and healthy relationships I have in my life. And I hope uh, when you've done your mood boards, you will look at it and you see, see the thing. Because I want you to look at these mood boards and see a representation of the relationships uh, in your life that are healthy and good. Well, it's been fun. I hope you've had a lot of fun doing this. And I look forward to seeing all of you again. inspiring stuff from Jacob, eh? What a fantastic mood board, something that we can all do. I'm hoping that you um, have got lots of thoughts now uh, as a a way of creating your work for RSE Day 2021, which is where we are today. I'm John, uh, and I'm your host for what is turning out already to be a really exciting RSE Day 2021. And this is the day where we learn and celebrate safe and healthy relationships. We do that with schools, with families, with organizations. And when we were preparing for this day, we wanted to put together some kind of film that would give people a chance to capture what they think uh, makes up um, healthy relationships, to talk about love, to talk about family. Um, We had over 70 contributions and uh, they had an awful lot to say. We put them all together Uh, And this is the premiere of our RSE Day Faces film. A good friend is someone who gets you, who you can be yourself with. They're someone who knows what's important to you, uh, knows what makes you laugh, and most importantly, they make time for you. Friend is somebody who sticks with you through the good and the bad times. A good friend is the greatest gift you can have. A good friend is someone who's on your side, but also not afraid to tell you if they think you're in the wrong. Mean, excited and Karen. Karen. So if you were to choose your perfect friend, they would be exciting and caring, is that right? Yeah. Friendship is rewarding and it's good to have someone that you can trust. Good friend is to be kind and caring. Friends are the family that we choose. Friends that like trust, have trust and listen to you and don't talk behind your back and always there for you. Friendship is supporting each other. My friend is a friend is good to play with. A good friend is always there for you, but they also understand that life can get really busy sometimes and that that's okay. A good friend is someone that you can trust. A good friend is someone who listens, offers advice and supports you when needed, but also allows you to have space when you need that too. A good friend is kind. Hello and caring. Good friends do things they like together. A good friend is someone who plays with me. 
a good friend is someone you can do yourself with. A good friend will be kind and generous, but they'll also be honest with you too. A good friend is someone who really listens to you, so you feel heard and understood. A real friend is one that walks in when the rest of the world walks in. A healthy relationship is where you feel valued, comfortable and able to make your own choices and decisions. I think a healthy relationship is one that makes you happy and that makes the other person happy. A healthy relationship is one where you can truly be yourself. A healthy relationship is something that starts with a healthy relationship with myself. How I value myself, how I treat myself, how I kind to myself. Do I understand who I am? And if I have that, then I think that's the basis for my healthy relationships with others. A healthy relationship is having time for each other, but also feeling comfortable um, when, to talk about anything, absolutely anything, um, saying how you feel about something, giving them, and just really feeling safe and comfortable with, with that person. A healthy relationship can be with many different people, and it's made up of many different characteristics. A healthy relationship is trust and respect between two equals. A healthy relationship consists of good communication and respect. A healthy relationship is one where independent people agree to respect and love each other while also helping each other become the best versions of themselves that they can. Lose your friendships. Good relationship lets you be you. A healthy relationship is a place where you feel supported, loved and cared for. A healthy relationship is supporting each other through thick and thin. A healthy relationship is treating each other with respect and kindness. I feel a healthy relationship is based on mutual respect and listening to one another's issues and problems. A healthy relationship is one where there's mutual trust and respect. A healthy relationship is a relationship where the people involved agree to be in it and to the kind of relationship they want to have. A healthy relationship is communicating and deciding what you want from it together. A healthy relationship is caring for each other. A healthy relationship is one that allows you to be you without compromising your values or who you are. A healthy relationship should always make you feel comfortable being the person you want to be. Family is fabulous, family is unique. Family can be happy, family can be sad. Family can be fun, family can be cross. Family can be together, family can be apart. But family is fabulous and family is unique. And at the Walter Halls family in Nottingham, we're really looking forward to RSE Day and we're going to be fabulous. Family are people around you that love you. Um, they might be people you're related to, but they might not be. Um, but they're the people that you feel safe with and that you can be yourself with. Family is love. Family has been part of a community. My Taylor and Harry are Parfi Engelid. A family respects and loves each other. My mum gives me sound advice and she guides me if I have any issues or problems that I may have. Family is where you feel safe to be yourself and know that you are loved. Family doesn't have to be biological, it can be an adoptive or fostering family too, like my own. But the important thing is it's where you feel that you matter and belong. Family is ever growing. Family is anyone that you can rely on for safety, support and love and that will care for you when you need it. I think it was Maya Angelou that said, family is the people in your life who want you in theirs and who accept you for who you truly are. Love is phenomenal. Love is knowing someone on a deeper level. Love accepts you for what you are, warts and all. Love is when your partner's little imperfections and foibles become the things you cherish most. Love is something to give to yourself as well as other people. 
Be proud of who you are. Love is kindness, love is grace. Love is the best thing in the human race. Love is treating someone kindly, then they treat you the same way. Love is something that brings people together. Love is how we are connected. Love is when your mum can't stop telling you that she loves you 500,000 times a day, which can be really annoying. Love is seeing your daddy when you haven't seen him for five months. Love is something that comes from your heart. How can you come from love? My heart is full of love for my parents. Love can be anywhere, so catch it and keep it when you see it. Love is a special sort of energy. Love is a very special thing. You can't see it, but you can feel it in your heart. Love is an emotional feeling. Love is trusting one another. Love is kind. Love is great. Love is the best. Love is God. Love is feeling safe and a relationship is trusting and talking to one another. Love is really allowing yourself to trust someone but knowing that they'll trust you back in return. I think love is about putting the needs of other people before your own needs. This has been a difficult year, we've been frightened and we've been forced to do things we wouldn't normally do. In the middle of that time, there's been many people in the city who've considered other people and their needs before their own. And I think that's a really good demonstration of love. Love is kindness and respect. Love is something that shows care and magic. Love is when someone takes care of you, a friend loves you, or your family loves you. A hug is sometimes and sometimes shows love. Love is when you like a person a lot. Love is trust and respect. Love is different for everybody. I think for me, love is about understanding somebody and going through and riding those highs and, and lows with them and uh, just being accepting and understanding each other. Okay, Cyrus, what word comes to mind when I say love? Pa powerful. Love is important for us to know that we are safe, cared for and important. Despite what a lot of people say, love is not unconditional. It's absolutely fine to have reasonable, healthy boundaries and self-respecting conditions like I need my partner to treat me with kindness. It's also okay to leave somebody if they try to bend or break your boundaries because above all, it's important to be loving towards yourself. Welcome back. Wasn't that fabulous? Um, well, we are getting things in from across the country, uh, which is great. And uh, we're going to be giving you some shout outs in a minute. But I think the thing to do at the moment is to have a quick look at the timetable because the morning's racing away. And we're already halfway through our morning program coming up at 20 to 11, uh, exploring the poetry of Lord Byron with Rosney Hayward. And then followed by the second live link of the morning with Hampswake Primary School in Harrogate, who have been busy doing lots of activities to celebrate today. Um, that will be followed by a, a really great workshop with the poet uh, Matthew Miller um, that you will not miss because uh, you shouldn't miss it at all. Get your pens and papers ready uh, as Matthew takes you through a poem all about the senses and that's something that you're going to create. Um, you can also create your own emotion cube uh, later on and then we're going to have another showing of our Faces of RSA Day film and then we're going to round off the morning program uh, with the story of the lion and the mouse. That takes us into lunch and then after lunch We've got um, some more activities for you. We're going to be spending more time looking at the gallery uh, and exploring in particular the uh, leaves that are being created for our Discovery Education Friendship Tree. Now, thanks to Discovery Education for their support in making this year possible. Uh, and they've brought to us this fantastic activity which you are responding to in droves. And if you go to the Padlet through rscday.com, you'll be able to contribute to the friendship tree 
And people are putting all sorts of stuff on there, not just pictures or a few words. People are writing lots and lots of things about their relationship uh, advice and how to have safe uh, and healthy relationships with people about themselves, about their identity, how they feel strong, uh, how they feel uh, like they have good self-esteem uh, and how they um, support themselves and support others to be the best that they can be. And that's really one of our major aims at RSE Day is you feeling good about yourself wherever you are. So that's the timetable for the rest of this morning and into this afternoon. And we're going to show all the work that you're sending us. And it's coming in from all over the place. Some shout outs for you for the year six Upton Seven primary students in Worcestershire. Uh, big shout out to you. And also to the year fives at Chilton Primary. I know you're really busy too. So hello. Uh, thanks for taking part. Uh, Ocean Park Primary in Doncaster, the Year 4 students there are busy doing RSE Day activities, uh, as are the Explore Relationships charity team, who are sharing feedback on social media from students who've participated in their sessions. Good to hear that. At Warnsbeck Primary School in East Yorkshire, the whole school is working together to celebrate everyone exploring what it means to be a unique individual. Fantastic. Uh, children at Ackworth Primary School uh, in West Yorkshire are busy today. Children in Year 4 are drawing self-portraits with positive comments about themselves. And the Year 5s are creating friendship word banks and recipes for a good friend. That sounds fabulous. Um, the Year 6s are taking part in the See Me for Who I Am Discovery Education session later today. That's coming up after lunch. Well done, Ackworth, and happy RSE Day to you. And the Consent Coalition in Nottingham have launched an excellent new consent resort this week. And this is a, an A to Z of consent, a resource for you to use. They're sharing positive messages about consent via their social media today. And you can follow their hashtag, hashtag consent knots. Now, local to Nottingham, up at Newstead Abbey, a beautiful house and gardens, uh, the ancestral home of Lord Byron, who had a very special relationship, as we're about to find out from uh, Rosney, who is going to be telling us all about uh, Lord Byron and Boson. Hi and welcome to Newstead Abbey in Nottingham. This house has a long and varied history, but its most famous owner was Lord Byron the Poet, who owned it from 1808 until he sold it in 1817. Lord Byron could be described as the first celebrity. His poem Child Harold was published in 1812 and sold out within three days. He said, I awoke one morning and found myself famous. Byron encouraged this celebrity status, which meant that people weren't just interested in his poems, but were curious and fascinated about him as a person. So Byron cared a lot about how other people viewed him. He carefully chose how he was portrayed in paintings and how he appeared in public, in the same way that celebrities today might control how they're seen on social media or on reality TV programmes. Byron is described as one of the romantic poets. So romantic poets cared about emotion and saw poetry as a spontaneous overflow of powerful feelings. So you might think that someone who is good at writing about emotions and love would be good at relationships themselves. But Byron's own life and relationships are a lot more complicated. So we know Byron had some good friends, but we don't have much evidence or any evidence really of him having a positive long-term romantic relationship with a man or a woman. In fact, the opposite really. Um, we know he had a difficult relationship with his mother and he did get married, but that ended within a year. But there is one poem that I'd like to share with you. A poem that was written for someone that Byron really knew and loved, someone he was devoted to, and someone who when they died, he wrote a beautiful poem for and put it on their tombstone, had it carved on there here at Newstead. That poem is called Epitaph for a Dog and was written for his pet dog, Boson. So you might think it's strange to talk about a poem about a dog rather than a person, but in the poem, as you'll see in a minute, 
Byron compares Boson to a pupil and says that he's better. And to me, this poem is the most honest poem of Byron's when it comes to love and relationships. It isn't some fleeting romantic ideal of someone that sounds good in a poem or some kind of social media snapshot that doesn't give you the full picture of the person. It's actually about someone he spent time with and about their character and the value of who they are as an individual and all the time and years they've spent together. It's quite a long poem, so I'm just going to read you a section of it. If you want to read it in full, then you can find it on the internet or you can come and look at it here at Newstead. And I want you to listen and see what Byron is saying about his dog, Boson. Near this spot, I deposited the remains of one who possessed beauty without vanity, strength without insolence, courage without ferocity, and all the virtues of a man without his vices. This praise, which would be unmeaning flattery if inscribed over human ashes, is but a just tribute to the memory of Boson, a dog, who was born in Newfoundland, May 1803, and died at Newstead, November 18th. 1808. But the poor dog in life, the firmest friend, the first to welcome, foremost to defend, whose honest heart is still his master's own, who labours, fights, lives, breathes for him alone. To mark a friend's remains, these stones arise. I never knew but one, and here he lies. So I think from this poem you can tell that Boson is someone that Byron has actually spent time with whose character he knows and whose company he values and enjoys. In fact, Byron later in the poem describes him as loyal and welcoming and says that Boson will fight, work and breathe for him. So I think it's fair to say that Byron's relationship with Boson was probably going to be easier than his relationship with his mother or his wife um, and that Boson, as a dog, probably asked a little bit less from him. I expect Boson wasn't bothered about communication or quality time or if Byron remembered his birthday. But I just still feel from this poem that you get a sense of someone that Byron really valued and cared for. And the importance of some of those characteristics and the time that they spent together. In fact, we know how important Boson was to Byron for two reasons. The first is that he um, commissioned a massive portrait of him that we have here at Eustace Abbey. And the second is that he built a tomb for him, which has that poem engraved on it, and requests that he be buried with Boson when he died himself. So if you were to write a poem about a really good friendship, what would you write about? What characteristics do they have? What about their company do you really enjoy and value? Perhaps you could write a poem about a friendship in the same way that Byron wrote a poem about his dog, Boson. If you do write any poems, I'd love to see them, so do send them to us. And I hope you've enjoyed your time here at Newstead Abbey. Enjoy the rest of your RSE day. Thanks, Rosny. That was lovely. And of course, yeah, our pets are really special to us, aren't they? They can be our friends too. Um, we've got the next uh, of our live links coming up. And I'm really delighted to be joined by uh, pupils from Hampswaite School oh in gosh. Yorkshire. Hello there. Hi. Give us a wave if you can hear me. <clears throat> now. Um, do you want to introduce yourselves to, to RSE Day viewers? Um, I'm Harry. I am 11 years old and I like to play football. Thanks, Harry. Hi, I'm Fletcher. I'm 10 years old. I'm a pupil at Hamsweight School and I love to cook, dance and drama. Great. Hi, I'm Sienna. I'm 11 years old. I I'm at Hampswaite Primary School and I love to do horse riding. Thanks, Sienna. So Sienna and, and Harry and Fletcher, you're representing Hampswaite School. Um, I know that the school has uh, been busy already because you've already sent us uh, lots of things for us to feature in our gallery space, which is great. Um, but I, I guess I'd like to hear from you if you could tell everybody, um, what does Hampswaite School do to help you have... Uh, safe and, and healthy relationships all the way through the year? 
So we're a village school with a family feel, so I and he, so I don't know. Sorry. We have um, five values on uh, our own value star, which are friendship, support, respect, creativity, and belief. And centre is achieve, enjoy, and flow. Fantastic. So those values are something that the whole school follows all the year round. Um, what have you been doing today, particularly? Have there been some activities that you've been doing in different classes? Well, we've had Key Stage 1, who have been looking at friendship, and then we've had Key Stage 2, who's been looking at emotions and positive relationships. And, Senna, what kind of activities have they been doing? Have they been doing artwork? Has it been storytelling or writing poetry? Um, well, in Key Stage 1, they've been doing a song about friendship, and then in Key Stage 2, they've been doing poetry about positive relationships. Fantastic. And are you guys going to sing a song for us about friendship now, or are you going to do that later? Maybe um, later. Probably later. <laughs> I have later no idea. Um, now, now, Fletcher, you, you mentioned earlier some of the things that you do, like drama. Um, does that help you uh, develop your skills to develop relationships? Do you think when people do drama, it helps them connect with people? Well, I think that people who do drama are quite confident and they stand out in what they do. But I think people who also stand out become more friendly. Not, not no offense to any other people who don't do drama, but people get more friendships with people because they're more outgoing and they're easier to talk with. Yeah, and, and I know, Fletcher, you're very passionate about some of the work that you've been doing around consultation. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Um, well, some of the pupils and a member of staff, we've had a discussion about consultation um, for RSE and what should be taught and what shouldn't be taught and what's appropriate to be taught in different stages of like, the years. Okay, and what sort of effect has that had? What Has that had any impact in the school? Has it made a difference? Well, yeah, because a lot of people, there isn't a lot of arguments. A lot of the people at Hampstead are really friendly and they're respectful. And we they just obey the rules and um, respect the, all the values and stuff. And it, does that apply to the teachers as well as the students? Oh, yeah. All the teachers are friendly. They um, help you if you need it. They're just amazing. Fabulous. Okay, so tell me a bit more, all of you, about the sort of things that you're going to do for the rest of the day for RSE Day. Have you got any plans to do any of the activities or do some more reporting around the school? Um, uh, well, we can't report because of the lockdown bubbles due to coronavirus because we can't go around to other classes, but I think that... Um, what we've heard, I think some classes are going to do artwork, some classes are going to do some writing, um, and people are just going to just have a great time. That sounds fabulous. Yes, I appreciate that as well, because there are some constraints on what you can and can't do. Uh, one of the things we're doing today for RIC Day is the friendship tree. Uh, and we're encouraging students to write onto a leaf for the friendship tree, something that they'd like to pass on about what makes a good relationship. So if you were going to write a leaf for the friendship tree, what what would be your advice about what do people need to think about uh, when, they're, when they're having a, a good relationship with somebody? What helps keep them safe? What helps them feel respected? Having someone that you really, really trust it's quite good because if you be like a really horrible person, you just want a nice, trustworthy person. Yeah, I agree, Sienna. Trust is really important and feeling trusted uh, and uh, also being able to trust uh, the person, your friend as well. That, that's so important. I agree. Anything else? Harry, what do you think um, makes for a good relationship? If you know them really well, you've been friends for quite a while and um, uh, you're just like, you get on really well and you enjoy spending time with each other. 
Yeah, I think that's right too. Enjoying spending time with with one another. If if it's a friendship where you don't enjoy being friends with somebody, you might start thinking, "Hang on a minute, this probably isn't the best friendship for me to be in." There might be something wrong. What about you, Fletcher? What do you think makes a good relationship? We're always going to need somebody to rely on because, um, say you have gone to your friend's house and maybe done some work there for school but then you've accidentally left it there you might be able to communicate with them to ask them to bring it in um, just so they can hand it in on time and I think if you can rely on them to do on that I think that just make such a good person that they're willing to help you in your situation. Yeah I agree with that too I think if you can relying on somebody being able to trust them and being able to enjoy your friendship with somebody. These are all really great qualities, aren't they? And I hope that, that you're able to um, do that and explore that uh, at Hamsweight. So tell the rest of the world, if you don't mind, because we're going out not only across the country, but all over the, all over the world. Um, what are the things that you would like to tell the world about Hampswaite Primary? How would you describe the school to anybody who was wanting to know about it? Uh, it's a good school, of course, but uh, what makes it special? Um, well, I think what makes Hampswaite special is that the people inside it, they always care for you. They're there for you when you need them. They're supportive, they're creative, and they're just nice to be around. Okay, so it's caring and creative environment. Anything else? Um, well, all of them believe in you. So um, you could be going on stage or something or doing something in front of the whole school and nobody's going to laugh about it or be mean about it. Everyone's going to be there and say, well done, and just be very supportive and they're always going to believe in you, no matter what. Yeah, fantastic. Sienna, what do you think? I mean, it's the friendships between the children and the adults. It's like it's sort of the heart of Hampsway, and it just it makes it such a happy place. Yeah, that's fantastic. Well, okay, it's been a real pleasure to to talk with you. Um, one last thought from Hampswaite. Um, what's your message to all the children who are who are watching RSE Day today? What would you like them to do? Believe in yourself. Support one another. Stay positive. Stay positive. Believe in yeah. yourself, support one and each other and stay positive. And Fletcher? Never have negative thoughts because you can always do it no matter what. You can always do it. Never have self -doubt. Never have negative thoughts. Always believe in yourself. Well, fantastic. Um, give yourselves a round of applause and I want everybody all around the country to give yourself a round of applause as well. That was wonderful. Um, and I'm going to say goodbye to you now, Hamsway, and we're going to go back to the studio. But I want you to have a fantastic day. And I know that Team Griffin in year three and four uh, have been sending material in for our, uh, for our gallery. Uh, and also, um, yes, go Team Griffin. Uh, and also mm -hmm. on the Padlet for the Discovery uh, Education Friendship Tree. So one thing I, I will ask you to do is go away and make sure that you go to the Padlet through rsedae.com and complete one of the uh, friendship tree leaves and uh, you can put the name of the school on it put your first name on and we'll do our best to to feature those this afternoon and they'll be there on the padlet for everybody to see so whatever you do share it with us and we'll be delighted to see it and it's been wonderful to have you with us this morning ham sweet thank you very much indeed and enjoy the rest of the day Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. Bye. Great stuff. Take care. Lovely. Hamsway Primary School there in uh, North Yorkshire, uh, just uh, up on the moors. A fabulous part of the world. Um, and talking of which, I was going to mention another fabulous part of the world. We had Rosney uh, talking about Lord Byron and Lord Byron's friendship with his dog, Boson, um, which you can find out all about Newstead Abbey. If you're ever around Nottingham in the Nottinghamshire area, do visit Newstead Abbey, one of the most fantastic places to visit. Uh, and you can go and see a statue of Boson in the grounds of Newstead Abbey. So that, that's a great day out. Um, we've got a couple of... Um, things to talk about which come from our friendship tree which is the padlet which is growing ever more by the hour uh, which is uh, available through the uh, rseday.com website and it's the discovery education um, friendship tree which is growing at a pace and I'm just going to give you a little uh, snippet of some of the things that people are saying on there because I'm finding them very inspiring. Um, 3KJ at Chilton um, think that a good friend 
is reliable, honest, trustworthy, believable, caring, helpful, fun, and respectful. Those are really great qualities, really good values. And you'll find those on the leaves on the Friendship Tree Farm 3KJ at Chilton. So well done. Um, what is a good friend to you? Well, that's a question that St. Joseph's Primary in Gaul in Yorkshire have been looking at. They think that a good friend is someone who is kind, caring and reliable. And do you remember Fletcher was talking about that just a minute ago with Hampswake Primary School, that a good friend is someone who's reliable. So kind, caring and reliable, these are good qualities. And uh, Westwood School in Leeds, the maths groups in year three, four and five, they've been looking at what a good friend is too. Uh, they think it's somebody who plays with you, somebody who is loyal to you, kind and helpful. A good friend is a kind friend. A good friend is respectful and someone you can trust. So, really inspiring words about what a good friend is. Uh, and words are the subject of our next workshop. Kathy's going to give me some shout outs. Here we go. I'm going to try and slip these in. Thank you, Kathy. Um, I'm going to put these in before we go to our, our next artist. Um, we've got a shout out to Rise Park Primary in Nottingham, who have been talking today about respect and how we can show respect to others. Um, you can see photos from Rise Park uh, later on today after lunch uh, in, in the gallery. And we'll be featuring lots and lots of work after lunch. So it's a, a time for you to tune in uh, and hopefully see the stuff that you've been doing as well as everybody else's. We've got a shout out to Warren School in Lowestoft in Suffolk, getting involved with all the activities that are going on today. Really good uh, at knowing what it takes to be a good friend. We'll be going back to the map in a, in a short while and I'll be filling in more stickers and showing where everything's going off. But first, uh, a really great workshop uh, with Matty Miller. Uh, a poet, a writer, performer, director. They're based in Nottingham, creative writing specialist. Uh, uh, and Matt has put together a workshop exploring the senses and using those uh, to create poems which really get to the heart of how you feel about yourself and how you feel about others and expressing it in a really positive way. So, pen, paper, handy, um, imagination at the ready. Let's go and see uh, Matt in action. Hello everyone. I hope you're all having a really great RSC day. My name is Matt and I'm a poet. So our session for this RSE Day activity is going to be poetry. I love writing poetry about people and places and um, I feel like it helps me get to know them better. Um, and of course today we're also thinking about good healthy relationships and what it is that makes a good healthy relationship. So what I would like us to do for this session is to write celebration poems for people or places in our lives that we would like to celebrate and give thanks to. All you're going to need is pen and paper to write with, or a laptop if you prefer. So what is a celebration poem? What does that mean? Well, it, it basically just means writing a poem about the qualities or values that we admire in someone that we have a good relationship with. Because if you have a good relationship with something, chances are there's, some, there's going to be something that you admire about that person. And they'll have things that they admire about you too. So where do we start? Well, firstly, we're going to need to pick someone or something to write a poem about and celebrate. There are lots of different kinds of relationships, aren't there? You might have family relationships like your mum or your dad or brothers or sisters or stepbrothers or stepsisters. Or, or you might have a best friend. That's a, that's a different kind of relationship again. Or it might not be a person at all. You might have a favourite pet a fish or a dog or or you might have a place that you really love. I, I love sitting in the garden um, or going for walks in Scotland. I have good relationships with those places. Or you might have a teddy or a favourite football. There are lots of different kinds of relationships, but what makes a good relationship? Do you have any ideas? 
I think there's lots of things that make a good relationship, but one of the main ones is that a good relationship is one that makes you happy. So step one for us, for our poem, is going to be very, very simple. All I want you to do is write a list of people or places or objects that make you happy. I'll do it with you. OK, great. So now we've got our lists of people, places or objects that we want to celebrate. Um, and now that we've got that, what we want to do is we want to choose one of them to celebrate. Which one jumps at you most? Don't think about it too much. Just go with your gut. Great. Um, from my list, I'm going to go with my mum. And what we're going to do next is we're going to add an action to that. For, so for the person or place or object that you've chosen, you want to add a specific behaviour or thing that they do that you really want to celebrate, that you love them for, that you admire them for. So with my mum, for instance, what I love about my mum, one thing in particular, is the way that she laughs when she's at the theatre, like uh, no one else has to be laughing for her to laugh. She's completely uninhibited. She's great at having an audience. She's got this real cackle. So that's what I want to celebrate about my mum. So what do you admire about the person you've chosen? You can start writing it down now if you've got an idea. It might be something to do that makes you laugh, maybe, or, or that makes you feel comfortable and safe, because that's, that's another really important thing in a good relationship too. Fantastic. So now we all have a place, person or object we want to celebrate and an action we want to celebrate them for. So this next step is maybe my favourite. This is where we can start getting some really interesting language in play. We're going to start playing with senses. So what do we mean by senses? How many are there? Can you think? Well, there are five main ones. Do you know what those are? Yeah, so we have sight, smell, taste, touch and sound hearing. Those are the five main ones. There are others as well, like um, intuition, we could call a sense, which is your kind of ability to figure things out and know what's right and wrong. And that's really important in relationships too, because more often than not, you can, you can tell if a relationship is a good one, you can sense it, that's your intuition. And it's worth trusting and listening to that feeling because you know your own mind better than anyone else. But yeah, those five main ones, sight, smell, sound, touch and taste, we can add those into creative writing uh, to really spice it up. The spice being a smell or a taste of something you can, well, all of them, really. Anyway, so what I want you to do now is a senses map. OK, so you should have a handout for this. It looks like this. There we go. So we've got all the senses there. And if you don't have yours, that's fine. It's really easy to do one. Just you can write each of the senses and circle them. So we've got like five spider diagrams ready to be made just like that. Really easy. But yeah, use your hand there if you've got it. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to add things to this map based on the action of the personal place that we're celebrating. So for me, I'm writing about my mum and how she laughs at the theatre. So for sight, what can I see? I can see my mum's eyes creasing, that's a, that's a visible thing. Yeah, so that would go there. Um, sound is an obvious one, we've got laughter. 
But what does that laughter sound like? You could say that it sounds like pennies falling from a great height. So what we have now is a simile. It's saying something is like something else. And that can really give the writing a bit of a kick. I could also literally just put ha ha ha, like the noise of laughing. And that's called an onomatopoeia, um, which sounds complicated, but it just means a sound which a word which makes the same sound as the word it's describing. So ha ha ha. Or if you were writing about like a football flying through the air, you could write swoosh. Or if you were swimming, you could write sploosh or plunge. Can you think of any more? And what about smell? What can I put for smell? If my mum's laugh was a smell, what kind of smell would it be like? I think it would be fresh like rainfall. There's another simile. So hopefully you get the idea. Um, have a go now on your census map and I'll write along on mine too. Um, and then we'll move on to the next stage. Great, I hope you're getting on okay with that. Um, I'm just gonna show you some of the other ones I got. If you wanna keep writing while I do that, if you want a bit more time, absolutely feel free. So, what else do we have here then? Uh, we mentioned for sight the eyes creasing that we could see, and we talked about like pennies falling from a great height and the onomatopoeia, ha ha ha. So we've got a simile here an onomatopoeia here next to the ear. Uh, smell we talked about as well, fresh as rainfall. So the laughter smells as fresh as rainfall smells. Um, and what else did I get? So for taste, I thought again, a bit of a simile. I thought that maybe it sounds the way that a millionaire's slice tastes. You know, one of those caramel biscuits it's got chocolate it's a bit like a flapjack so i thought that would be sharp and sweet and rich and then for touch so the laughter feels comforting to me it feels like an audible cuddle a cuddle that you can hear um, and then i thought it might be that it feels like someone grabbing your shoulders and shaking them like giving you a proper shake um, and I'm going to add as well, I think also next to eyes creasing, another visual image bending. Forwards. I think my mum bends forwards as well when she laughs because she gets so into it. So there we go. Those are mine. I hope you got some good ones as well. Um, this just helps us to add a bit more texture and richness to our writing. So let's move on to the next stage. Brilliant. So next we've got one more exercise to flesh out our character or place a bit more, and then we'll get into starting to put the poems together. So the other handout that you should have is an outline of a gingerbread person on a piece of paper like this. Again, if you don't have it, it's really easy to draw. Just draw a, a person shape like that with enough space to write on the inside as well as the outside. So what I want you to do is on the outside of the line, we're going to write words that describe the physical appearance of the person, place or object that you're writing about. So for my mum, for instance, she's short, that would go on the outside and she's blonde um, and she's got a kind of bouncy walk. I think that would go on the outside as well. Um, if you were writing about a place, it might be that it's got really steep cliffs or a uh, wild sea or 
cosy blankets. Yeah. And then on the inside of the line, you want to write the inner characteristics of this personal place and how it makes you feel. So my mum, for instance, has lots of energy that would go on the inside um, and she makes me feel calm. So calming might go on the inside for a place that, like it might be awestruck or it might be fearless. And again, we could start adding some similes here, too. We might have like fearless as a lion or on top of the world, like a tightrope walker. Have a go. See what you can get. Great, we're very nearly ready to put our poems together now. Let me just show you what I got for that gingerbread exercise. And again, feel free to keep writing while I talk through mine if you want a bit of extra time um, or if you've got some more ideas. So, as I was saying, my mum is blonde. She's short, she's quite bouncy. Um, I also added smiley, those are her physical things on the outside that you can see. And then on the inside she's got lots of energy, that's something that's internal for her. Um, the way she makes me feel, she's quite calming. Um, she's funny, that could maybe go on the inside or the outside, or both. Um, she's kind put clever as an owl so we've got a simile there again and then fearless as a lion yeah fearless enough to laugh in the theatre without anyone else so i hope you got some good stuff as well and uh yeah let's move on to the final stage fantastic so now we have a whole bunch of tools and word palettes to start shaping our poems. Yours might be taking shape already. Um, it might need a bit more time. I'm going to show you where I've got to with mine through following these exercises. Um, bear in mind that I've had a bit longer to think about mine than you will have on yours. But this is where I got to. I want to celebrate my mum, who laughs at the theatre without anyone else having a laugh. Eyes creasing, bending forward, cackling like pennies falling from a great height, as if she's laughing for everyone in the building, grabbing their shoulders and shaking them like a cuddle fresh as rainfall, rich and sharp as a millionaire's slice as if she's the only laughter left in the universe. This short, blonde energy bundle, fearless as a lion. Look at her go. Ha, ha, ha. So could you see where I got the bits from the exercises we've been doing? You know, so I started with the person I wanted to celebrate um, and then we've got the, the action. And then we had some sight things from the sense map. Um, we had, you know, and then the some of the sound things from the set. We had all the sense map things in there, um, and a couple of the gingerbread men things at the end. The short blonde energy bundle. I added a couple of things as well, didn't I? You know, um, the uh, the line about her laughter being the only laughter left in the universe. That was new. And that was just an idea that came as I was writing it up. And that's fine as well. You might have other ideas that come to you, other similes that you can throw in like that to make everything a bit bigger and hang together. Um, so for the last couple of minutes, I'd really like you to just try to start arranging your poem. Um, maybe start with I want to celebrate and then the person, place or object and then the action and then use the rest of the exercises to, to carry on from there, see how you get on.
Great. I hope you're all getting on really well with that bit of writing. Um, and I hope that this has been fun. We're drawing towards the end now. Um, I hope it's allowed you a bit of space to think about good relationships that you have in your life, as well as playing with language and writing some poems. Um, just remember that poetry is just about playing with words. There's no right or wrong. You're in charge. Um, these are just some exercises which hopefully get you started with some material and some ideas. Um, it might be that during this session you've finished a poem, you've got something you're happy with, that's brilliant. It might be that you don't think it's quite there yet and you need to play around with it a bit more before you're happy with it, that's brilliant too. Just keep playing and keep writing. And maybe once it's finished you'll even be able to read it to the person it's about or read it in the place it's about. Um, I'm definitely going to share mine with my mum. Um, before I go as well, I just wanted to let you know that the poem that I've been working on here and this, this whole workshop was uh, written in response to a poem by another poet who I really like uh, called Caroline Bird. Um, her poem is called The Blonde and the Atom Automobile um, and it's about her mum and the way her mum ducks when she drives under car bridges. It's brilliant. Um, it's it's really worth checking out. I'll leave a, a Twitter link if you want to have a look at that. Lots of poets write in response, uh, inspired by other poets. Um, so keep writing and keep reading as well. Um, have fun putting your poems together. Um, keep having good, healthy relationships and enjoy the rest of your RSE day. Thank you very much. Bye for now. Wasn't Matt's poem fantastic? What a great way to put together your thoughts. So I hope you're going to have a go at that uh, and then send it to us. RIC Day 2021. Uh, we are getting stuff in from all over the country and I'm busy with Cathy filling up the map of all the different schools and groups and organisations around the country who are taking part today and who have sent us things. So if you want to be a dot on our map and make it ever more colourful, please send in your work. Now, a few shout outs for those who have sent us things uh, and who are busy with activities. Whitburn Church uh, of England Secondary Academy in South Tyneside. They've developed and improved their RSC resources. They're allowing pupils to be involved in the planning. That's fantastic, working together to make their RSC activities and resources. Coop Academy in Beckfield, hello to you. Uh, you've got the four ways of being with daily mindfulness and you're doing some special lessons and activities to celebrate today. So well done, Coop Academy. And Framingham Earl High School in Norwich are also involved with RSE Day, doing workshops for year nine, including work on assertive decision making. Very important to be confident when you make decisions. A foundation stage children at Middleton Primary in Nottingham are making transient art using objects collected from the school grounds to make faces showing different emotions. And pupils in year one and two are taking part in the Great Middleton RSE Day Bake Off. And they've got cupcakes with faces on to fit in with the theme. Now, Middleton's just around the corner from us, so do feel free to taxi round any of your cupcakes, Middleton, and we'll try them out in the studio. Um, a few more for you. Uh, we should say Borodar to the RSE team at Cardiff University, who have got a conference on RSE today, and they're busy tweeting and following our live stream too. So thanks very much for that. Students at Ilfracombe Academy in North Devon, well, they've been nominating positive relationship role models, and the role models identified will be presented with certificates during the day. Uh, look forward to seeing your, uh, your photos from that. Epsom College in Surrey. They've been doing uh, lots of stuff to celebrate RSE Day, including exploring their RSE policy with older students teaching the younger ones about consent. And they've also been flying their rainbow flag across the campus to highlight their diversity, equality and inclusion. Children at Southwold School in Nottingham have created flowers with their faces on and special people that they want to celebrate on RSE Day. They've got a flower trail along the path. And they'll also be thinking about golden moments, a special item, something they've done, a gift or something said to them that made their day. Children at Woodland School in Coles Hill, Warwickshire, meanwhile, well, they're focusing on safe and positive friendships 
and they're taking part in lots of activities, preparing for a group picnic in the park. Sounds tasty. Uh, year nines at Queen Catherine School in Kendall in Cumbria, well, they're creating a padlet on top tips for healthy relationships and creating a short montage on relationships. An activity for you. Catherine Kirk, our very own Catherine from RSE Day, she's been busy making uh, an emotion cube. You need some card, scissors, glue, and some paper, and a pen. Uh, and then you can join in with Catherine as she makes an emotion cube.
I'm loving the emotion cube. Thank you, Catherine. That looks like a lot of fun. And you can find that uh, resource on the rseday.com website on all our resources. So if you missed some of how to make the emotion cube, go to the website uh, and have another look uh, at that video. Uh, I can see how that would be really useful for having conversations about emotions, trying different faces uh, on there. You can choose six different things and change them up change them around, uh, make one to take home and, and play it at home too. Fantastic. Thank you, Catherine. Um, the shout outs are, are coming in thick and fast and all the works coming in on our uh, Padlet, uh, on the Friendship Tree and on the website for the gallery. Uh, and you can use our social media hashtag RSE Day to, oh, Lewis is having a moment. There we go. Uh, RSE Day hashtag RSE Day is the, our Twitter handle. Um, the email is rshe at nottinghamcity.gov.uk. You can send your work to us through those uh, different routes, but you can also just go to www.rseday.com to find the full timetable and all the resources and all the activities. Um, we are coming to you from Nottingham, but broadcasting live streaming uh, across the country and beyond. Uh, I'm John Ree, your host, uh, and with me in the studio today, we've got Kathy and Glenn, the production uh, wizards, and also our tech wizards, who are Lewis and Rob. Uh, and we are coming towards the end of our morning programming already. Um, and we'll be also looking at our afternoon programming in a, a short while. But some things to do before then, we've got uh, some story time coming up for you at 11.45. Um, and we've also uh, got our Faces of RSE Day film to show you again, which is coming up in a few moments' time. Uh, and then we'll be having uh, another opportunity to look at what's been going on before we break for lunch. So you, you get an hour off uh, in RSE Day to go and enjoy some lunch uh, and some deserved uh, downtime uh, and gather up your strength and energies because we'll be back from one till three with more activities, more things to do, more inspiration, more people to talk to on RSE Day 2021. This is all about sharing messages around safe and healthy relationships relationships with schools and families and organizations uh, helping us learn and create together and you're really busy learning and creating out there um, a few shout outs year seven to ten at Hartsmere secondary school in Suffolk you're taking part in a whole school RSE quiz that uh, sounds good um, every class at Walter Hall's primary school in Nottingham meanwhile well they're doing a fabulous face activity to celebrate diversity of the whole school family that sounds great Walter Hall so well done keep that going students at Nottingham Academy are having RSC citizenship sessions and a lovely treat of refreshments outside uh, a good treat and um, there's a staff charity bake-off and an art and poster competition just a shout out to all schools in the Nottingham area if you are having a bake-off do consider us we're down at Broadway near now media centre uh, in the heart of Hockley uh, please feel free to drop off any cupcakes um, before three o'clock uh, Fertile Heart have planned a recorded webinar to celebrate RSE and Outspoken Sex Ed are highlighting RSE Day in their newsletter to parents. Ava Hunt Theatre in Derbyshire are launching uh, Real For Me, a digital resource with teacher activities that explores the impact of social media on young people's relationships. Really important issue, so well done. Meanwhile, on our friendship tree, some of the things people are putting on the friendship tree, well, Pembroke Dock, they've been busy uh, painting beautiful leaves. Well done, Pembroke Dock, fantastic work. Um, Barker End Primary Leadership Academy are making friendship chains. Um, Nottingham Academy have been thinking about what makes a good friend. Well, they think it's someone who makes you happy, someone who is supportive, uh, someone who's always there for you, uh, and someone who sees the best in you. That's a really important quality. And Chestnut Class at Old Basford, we've given you a shout out already, and that's inspired you to make some friendship leaves, which is fantastic. Now, Chestnut Class, think a good friend shares is kind, respectful, caring, has good manners, is helpful, plays together, compromises, listens, makes you laugh, makes you smile, and understands you and your needs. Now, kind words like polite and loyal were mentioned by Chestnut Class. Those are really fantastic and inspiring words. Well done, all of you. Thank you for putting those. Thank you for sharing them with us. Um, 
some of the people who shared their thoughts about safe and healthy relationships were our contributors to our RSE Day film, Faces film. Uh, we asked uh, contributors in the RSE family to say what they thought made a good relationship, uh, what love meant to them, what family meant to them. We had uh, about 70 contributions to this and we put them all together to make a special film. And um, we're going to show that to you right now. A friend is someone who gets you, who you can be yourself with. They're someone who knows what's important to you, uh, knows what makes you laugh, and most importantly, they make time for you. A friend is somebody who sticks with you through the good and the bad times. A good friend is the greatest gift you can have. A good friend is someone who's on your side, but also not afraid to tell you if they think you're in the wrong. Mean excited and caring. Caring. So if you were to choose your perfect friend, they would be exciting and caring, is that right? Yeah. Friendship is rewarding and it's good to have someone that you can trust. Good friend is to be kind and caring. Friends are the family that we choose. Friends that like trust, have trust and um, listen to you and don't talk behind your back and um, always there for you. Friendship is supporting each other. My friend is a good friend. is good to play with. A good friend is always there for you, but they also understand that life can get really busy sometimes and that that's okay. A good friend is someone that you can trust. A good friend is someone who listens, offers advice and supports you when needed, but also allows you to have space when you need that too. A good friend is kind, helpful and caring. Good friends do things they like together. A good friend is someone who plays with me. A good friend is someone you can be yourself with. A good friend will be kind and generous, but they'll also be honest with you too. A good friend is someone who really listens to you, so you feel heard and understood. A real friend is one that walks in when the rest of the world walks out. A healthy relationship is where you feel valued, comfortable and able to make your own choices and decisions. I think a healthy relationship is one that makes you happy and that makes the other person happy. A healthy relationship is one where you can truly be yourself. A healthy relationship is something that starts with a healthy relationship with myself. How I value myself, how I treat myself, am I kind to myself? Do I understand who I am? And if I have that, then I think that's the basis for my healthy relationships with others. A healthy relationship is having time for each other, but also feeling comfortable um, when, to talk about anything, absolutely anything, um, saying how you feel about something, giving your opinion on something, um, and just really feeling safe and comfortable with, with that person. A healthy relationship can be with many different people and it's made up of many different characteristics. A healthy relationship is trust and respect between two equals. A healthy relationship consists of good communication and respect. A healthy relationship is one where independent people agree to respect and love each other while also helping each other become the best versions of themselves that they can be. A good relationship values your friendships. A good relationship lets you be you. A healthy relationship is a place where you feel supported, loved and cared for. A healthy relationship is supporting each other through thick and thin. A healthy relationship is treating each other with respect and kindness. I feel a healthy relationship is based on mutual respect and listening to one another's issues and problems. A healthy relationship is one where there's mutual trust and respect. A healthy relationship is a relationship where the people involved agree to be in it and to the kind of relationship they want to have. 
A healthy relationship is communicating and deciding what you want from it together. A healthy relationship is caring for each other. A healthy relationship is one that allows you to be you without compromising your values or who you are. A healthy relationship should always make you feel comfortable being the person you want to be. Family is fabulous. Family is unique. Family can be happy. Family can be sad. Family can be fun. Family can be cross. Family can be together. Family can be apart. But family is fabulous and family is unique. And at the Walter Halls family in Nottingham, we're really looking forward to RSE Day and we're going to be fabulous. Family are people around you that love you. Um, they might be people you're related to, but they might not be. Um, but they're the people that you feel safe with and that you can be yourself with. Family is love. Family has been part of a community. My Taylor and Harry are Parfi Engelid. A family respects and loves each other. My mum gives me sound advice and she guides me if I have any issues or problems that I may have. Family is where you feel safe to be yourself and know that you are loved. Family doesn't have to be biological, it can be an adoptive or fostering family too, like my own. But the important thing is it's where you feel that you matter and belong. Family is ever growing. Family is anyone that you can rely on for safety, support and love and that will care for you when you need it. I think it was Maya Angelou that said, family is the people in your life who want you in theirs and who accept you for who you truly are. Love is phenomenal. Love is knowing someone on a deeper level. Love accepts you for what you are, warts and all. Love is when your partner's little imperfections and foibles become the things you cherish most. Love is something to give to yourself as well as other people. Be proud of who you are. Love is kindness. Love is grace. Love is the best thing in the human race. Love is treating someone kindly, then they treat you the same way. Love is something that brings people together. Love is how we are connected. Love is when your mum can't stop telling you that she loves you 500,000 times a day, which can be really annoying. Love is seeing your daddy when you haven't seen him for five months. Love is something that comes from your heart. Heart and hugs come from love. My heart is full of love for my parents. Love can be anywhere, so catch it and keep it when you see it. Love is a special sort of energy. Love is a very special thing. You can't see it, but you can feel it in your heart. Love is an emotional feeling. Love is trusting one another. Love is kind. Love is great. Love is the best. Love is God. Love is feeling safe, and a relationship is trusting and talking to one another. Love is really allowing yourself to trust someone but knowing that they'll trust you back in return. I think love is about putting the needs of other people before your own needs. This has been a difficult year. We've been frightened and we've been forced to do things we wouldn't normally do. In the middle of that time, there's been many people in the city who've considered other people and their needs before their own. And I think that's a really good demonstration of love. Love is kindness and respect. Love is something that shows care and magic. Love is when someone takes care of you, a friend loves you, or your family loves you. A hug is sometimes and sometimes shows love. Love is when you like a person a lot. Love is trust and respect. Love is different for everybody. I think for me, love is about understanding somebody and going through and riding those highs and, and lows with them and uh, just being accepting and understanding each other. Okay, Cyrus, what word comes to mind when I say love? Pa powerful. Love is important for us to know that we are safe, 
cared for and important. Despite what a lot of people say, love is not unconditional. It's absolutely fine to have reasonable, healthy boundaries and self-respecting conditions like, I need my partner to treat me with kindness. It's also okay to leave somebody if they try to bend or break your boundaries because above all, it's important to be loving towards yourself. I love that film. Uh, we're going to get one more chance to see that this afternoon and look forward to that. Um, but now, to finish the morning programme, before we go to lunch, we thought it would be really nice to have a story. And who better to invite to do a story for us than Nikki Rafferty, who's a professional storyteller who has led storytelling in all sorts of places. She does story walks around Sherwood Forest. She works with all sorts of organisations. And... For last year's RSE Day, she uh, read a, a story all about love. And for this year, she's got a special story for us. You're going to hear it now, and it's called The Lion and the Mouse. A lion was fast asleep in the jungle and a tiny mouse out foraging for food ran over his paw, tickling him enough to wake him up which was very irritating and he clapped a huge paw on top of the mouse, trapping the tiny creature. And although the mouse wiggled and squeaked, the lion just lifted her up by her tail and opened its mouth wide, <sighs> ready to pop her inside. A little snack. <coughs> the mouse squeaked, Mr. Lion, don't eat me, I'm just a teeny weeny thing, I'm not going to fill your belly. Besides, I can be a very useful friend uh, and if you let me go, I'll, I'll, I'll do you a good turn one day. Well, the lion thought that was hilarious. I mean, really? The mouse thought he could be helpful to him. But, do you know what? That amused him so greatly that he decided to let the creature go as a reward. And the mouse scurried away gratefully. Well, later on that day, when Lion woke up, he too felt a little hungry and went off in search of food. And some hunters had laid a trap for him. They'd covered a pit in the ground with a net and, as, and then covered that with leaves and brush. And as the lion stepped onto it, he fell into the pit and the net closed over him trapping him and he wriggled and squirmed and tried desperately to break free but the net became more tangly and in the end he roared with fear and rage and frustration. The little mouse heard the lion's roar and knew at once that the lion was in trouble and she made a promise. The little mouse ran all the way back following the sound to where she found the lion deep in the pit, struggling and frantically trying to escape. The mouse, with no thought for her own safety, jumped into the pit and began to nibble through the strings of the net, making a hole that got bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And first the lion could put his paw through, and then the other paw, and then his head, and finally get free of the net. And he was able to climb out of the pit. And then a little squeaking sound <coughs> drew his attention to the fact that the little mouse was still in the bottom. She couldn't climb out. And the lion he eased himself down, stretched out and scooped up the tiny mouse in his big paw. 
the lion had learned something very important. That good friends come in all shapes and sizes. And the mouse had learned that you're never too small to be helpful. We got some shout outs to finish the morning. Uh, Fernwood School in Nottingham. They've had a whole week of ROC activities, including creating a playlist about love, about relationships and friendships. And they've created a photo montage of their diverse school community. And they're running a competition to create tweets about healthy relationships. I hope they're coming through Fernwood. Don't forget hashtag ROC day for all your tweets. Um, Callow Church of England School in Chesterfield. They're creating a pebble path of school faces to celebrate who they are and show a sense of togetherness. I've mentioned uh, colleagues at Cardiff University hosting a virtual online ROC conference, and that's for primary, secondary and special schools in Wales, sharing creative ways to capture the voice of learners. And they're developing a whole school approach to ROC using their free agenda resources. So well done, everybody there. Farringdon Community Academy in Sunderland. Well, they're busy with a series of workshops for their year 10 students, focusing on different aspects of RSE. Nicole and Jamie at Life Lessons, they're hosting a training event around inclusive RSE. And pupils at Rye Hope Junior School in Sunderland, they're drawing pictures of safe and special people in their lives. They're writing a thank you note on the other side. And I've got to say thank you to everybody who's been watching this morning. It's had a fantastic response all over the country, people sending their work in. We're going to be featuring all that in our afternoon session and more as well because we've got activities, uh, we've got a music workshop coming up, uh, we've got all sorts of things to do around safe and healthy relationships as we celebrate RSE Day 2021. And Lewis is going to just queue up the afternoon timetable for us now. Thank you, Lewis. Um, coming up, we want you back here at one o'clock, of course, uh, ready for our programme, which includes See Me For Who I Am, a reflection workshop with our partners at Discovery Education, Health and Relationships. Um, Elaine Winter, another artist, will be doing friendship sculptures. And then we've got the last of our live links, a very special one with Oakfield School in Nottingham that promises to be lots of fun. Uh, we've got the Faces of RSE Day film again, the last chance to catch that, before we have a songwriting workshop with our friends from the Freedom Foundation. Don't miss that. And then, it couldn't be RSE Day without Sid Sloan and his story time. Um, Sid's story will take us to almost the end of the day. We'll have time, though, to look at the gallery one more time to share the work that you're doing uh, with the rest of the world. Uh, please keep sending your work to uh, RSE R-S-H-E at nottinghamcity.gov.uk Use the hashtag RSE Day for any tweets and sending stuff via Twitter. Uh, and you can go to www.rseday.com for all the links and all the resources that you need to take part. And when the day is done, if you've missed anything, don't worry. You can watch it back on rseday.com and also on challengenottingham.co.uk with our partners at Challenge Nottingham. Uh, and you'll be able to see all the things that were your favourite bits or maybe bits you missed. Or maybe if you've been on or your work's been featured or you've had a shout out, maybe you want to watch back one more time and see that. So that's the morning done and it's been a busy one, I know. Uh, it's time for you to take a well-earned uh, lunch. Go and have something to eat have a rest, uh, recover your energy, and be back here at one o'clock for two more hours of RSE Day fun and activities. Uh, enjoy, and we'll see you at one o'clock.
Welcome. 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 Hello and welcome. 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 Hello, welcome. 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 Hi everybody and welcome to the National Relationship and Sex Education Day. Have a great time. And welcome back to RSE Day 2021. Hope you had a fantastic lunch. We had a great lunch in the studio. Still no cupcakes, but you know, we've still got two hours to go. Uh, and we've got two hours of fantastic programming coming up. All about uh, safe and healthy relationships, which is what we're all about today. Learning and celebrating safe and healthy relationships with schools, families and organisations across the country. And over the lunch period, we've been receiving lots and lots uh, of examples of your work which has been lovely to look at. Um, now I'm John uh, and I'm from the RSE Day team here in Nottingham um, but we've got schools all over the country taking part uh, in what is turning out to be our biggest and best ever celebration brought to you in conjunction with Challenge Nottingham, Discovery Education and Nottingham City Council and we've been compiling some of the work that's been coming in via our social media links and in any second now lewis is going to uh, flag up some of these uh, examples of the work and here we go here we've got a a poem of love and a whole big board um a rainbow love is like a rainbow um we've got a school that's been looking at facial expressions really good uh, a good way to do that uh, and also Havelock Academies have been busy doing some work um, that's better that's that's at a pace I can work with um, here's some more from Havelock Academy uh, staff nominations for RSC day uh, that's a really nice thing to do students nominating the teachers uh, that help them and and support them in their work so that's a Havelock Academy. Uh, meanwhile, we spoke to King Edward's School in, in Litchfield earlier today, and they were telling us about their project where they were using book covers with faces to explore different identities. And that is a fabulous picture in the library uh, of one of their students working with one of those books. That's uh, a mood board from Queen Catherine School and uh, class 9e have been doing a mood board all about what love is and what it isn't as well what it doesn't have to be um some key words uh, over and uh, the real trust in newark positive healthy relationships lots of good information and advice there uh, from the real team uh, southwold school in nottingham well, there, look, a sneak preview of the flowers on the fence already there. and They've got more going on today. Um, flowers to celebrate RSE Day. Really good work, Southwold. Keep it going. Here's some more Southwold school flowers for you. What a great way to advertise what you're doing. Put it on the railings of the school. Put it on the gate. Now, the Wells Academy, uh, they've been awarding certificates for uh, showing kindness, and they'll have been going over to all the students there. And a poem of love. Love gives me a warm feeling inside. Love is how we are connected, and love is a special source of energy. Fantastic. Keep them coming. We'll be visiting more throughout the afternoon. But now, uh, we're going to go to a special feature produced by our partners at Discovery Education, Health and Relationships. Um, it's a film that's been put together uh, through their primary health and relationships resource. You can find out more about this at www.discoveryeducation.com dot uk and the film is called see me for who i am hello 
welcome to this session. Uh, my name's Zoe, I'm from Discovery Education, and uh, this session is all about reflections. So there are a few different things obviously we can mean by reflections, um, but we're not just talking about what you see when you look in a mirror, we're going a bit deeper than that and look at who we are as people really. Uh, we're going to start by hearing Nicholas's story. So Nicholas is an incredible young man, as you will see. Uh, he's going to share his story, which I think conveys far better than I'd be able to, to say to you right now, how important it is to uh, embrace ourselves uh, for who we are um, and to also celebrate our differences. Um, because it would be very boring if we were all the same, wouldn't it? Um, after that, we're going to do a bit of an activity. Um, again, looking at our reflections and thinking of trying to connect with who we are as people by thinking about things that we like about ourselves and what we're proud of. But we are going to start with uh, Nicholas, so let's take it away. Being a young person today can be tough. You have to have the right trainers and clothes to fit in with your friends and look cool. Today I'm going to meet up with Nicholas, who believes we shouldn't be judged by the way we look. Hi Nick. Oh hey Elise, great to meet you. You too. Nick's house has pictures everywhere. This art is amazing. Drawing and painting has been an important way for Nick to express himself. It was kind of a hobby at first, but then it became something more because I couldn't necessarily speak out and use my own voice because um, I was experiencing bullying at the time. So why were you bullied? When I was born, I had a melanocytic nuvi mole, which covered all of my face. And for medical reasons, my family decided to have it removed and it left me with scarring. The scars that Nick's had since the operation meant he had an awful time in his early years at primary school. They would push me onto the floor, they would call me ugly, and I just felt so alone and by myself. And it was at that moment that I had to find a way to express what I was feeling. I've had moments when I was younger where people would like make fun of me because of my background. I felt like, why were people being like this to me? Yeah, that's exactly how I felt as well. It's kind of like you feel like you're going through this alone, but you're not. I think that you shouldn't be judged by the way you look or the person you are on the outside. I think it's your actions that you do that you should be judged on. In my spare time, origami is a thing that I enjoy. Do you know how to make a flapping bird? I don't. Right, get your piece of paper. Because <laughs> that doesn't look quite right. <laughs> Mine isn't so great. It's an almost bird. <laughs> oh, what's that picture of? Oh, so basically I won a competition because I drew um, a self-portrait of myself and um, I was the face of a chocolate bar. So how did the media respond to you being the face of a chocolate bar? They didn't really focus on me actually winning, but they focused on me having a facial disfigurement, as they like to say, but I prefer it as difference. Nick now uses his pictures to help others who have been bullied or feel insecure. I print them out into tiny cards using all the pocket money that I could find really oh. and hand them out into the public. When I give out the art it really helps them when I tell them my story and if they're experiencing something similar then they can get through it and they can become happier. And this looks really cool, what is it? It's the Diamond Legacy Award, and they gave me this award because of all of the community work that I do. And the award has led to Nick giving inspiring speeches telling his story. So this is my first ever speech, and it was at the Diamond Awards, and it was probably one of the most nerve-wracking moments of my life. But I got a lot of support from people. They were saying, you're going to be fine. And it was just an amazing moment, and I just pretty much wanted to do more. That's why I go into schools and do speeches. My vision has been for all individuals in society to embrace themselves and embrace each other's differences for the world to be a better place. I definitely think what you've done has inspired so many people and will continue to inspire. So thank you so much for letting me talk to you today. I don't think you all realise how powerful you are as human beings or how powerful you can be. Wow, what an amazing person. He's really an inspiration to us all that it's not about what we look like, but what we do that makes us who we are. 
Fantastic. And we are extremely lucky that we get to hear from Nicholas himself today as well. So uh, he's going to explain to us uh, what he's been up to recently. Um, and he also has a message for you today. So let's take it away. So I have had quite a few projects going on, working with different charities that really mean a lot to me. And um, recently I did a motivational speech regarding mental health with a school in America, over Zoom, obviously. And um, it was with a bunch of year sixes and I had a really good time. And, um, you know, I've been a part of an anti-bullying song and, you know, Diana Ward's workshops. I, I just love attending them because they encourage me for my motivational speeches. You know, my Art for Voice campaign that I started when I was quite young has taken off to the next level and I, recently campaigned for Lucy's Law, um, which is basically um, regarding dogs' rights when they're being sold or to try and prevent puppy farms and to try and prevent puppy trafficking. And um, you know, my message for all of you is in a time like this, you have to stay strong. And you know, I think my school um, have this uh, message going, be kind and be brilliant. So what a fantastic message um, that has run through everything that we've seen so far that it really is it's what you do that counts that's what really matters and everything on the outside is just all superficial it doesn't really mean anything um i was thinking earlier today uh, about the theme of rsc day today uh which is faces um and i was thinking how much we much more we could do of kind of celebrating and appreciating all the things our faces allow us to do. So, for example, our faces allow us to see and hear and listen to people, to talk, to taste and smell. Um, but also they help us to communicate. They help us to show how we're feeling. You know, that would that's quite difficult to do without a face. Um, so I think all of these things are, are things that we could probably be uh, thankful for and help us to look beyond what our faces actually look like, which seems quite trivial and quite small in comparison. Um, but today's this session, it's, it's not just about faces, it is about our full reflection. So this concept of who we are as people in entirety. Um, so for that, uh, we're going to do a short activity called My Reflection. Um, and it really is trying to get to the heart of of who we are. So what you're going to do is you're going to go and find yourself a mirror or maybe a phone and tablet and flip it onto selfie mode um, and have a look at yourself and try and see past just what you can see physically and try and connect with and try and think about who you actually are. What What's the person underneath just the face of it? If you don't you know judge a book by its cover then you know we're not judging you by your face so what's going on underneath um that is quite a big question though who are you so we've broken it down a bit for you and we've got four smaller questions to ask yourself to help you think about who you are uh so the first one is what am i good at so this could be something big it could be something small are you good at drawing are you good at listening to people are you good at making incredibly loud noises, anything. Um, and uh, the second question is, what do I like about myself? Um, do you like that you're really kind? Do you like your laugh? Have you got a really funny, infectious laugh that makes everyone else smile? Uh, the third question is, what would I like to get better at? So it might be, I'd like to get better at tidying my room, which is a good example for me so there wouldn't be socks lying all over my floor um it might be you want to get better at reading or ice skating or maybe you want to get better at asking for help sometimes do you know do you spend time stuck on your own for too long and actually you need to get better at saying oh, i need a hand um and then the last question question number four is what am i proud of um so this is, could be something that either you've done or that you regularly do that you think yeah, yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah, I'm pretty proud of that. Um, and this could be something that's you on your own that you feel proud of, or it could be uh, something that makes you feel proud to be in a team or community, 
So you might be really proud of your uh, family. You might think that you do and say lots of lots of good stuff and it makes you really, really proud uh, to be part of that family, for example. Um, so I'm aware that I've just given you four questions and fired them all at you, uh, but help is at hand. So we've got some fantastic volunteers, some brilliant young people, um, and they're going to share their reflections with you just to help give you a few more ideas and you can and hopefully that will help you come up with uh, some of the answers to those questions. So here they are. I'm, I'm good at... I'm good at reading and I'm good at jumping. Things I'm good at include football and swimming. I play in a football team in Watford and swim in school twice a week. One thing that I'm good at, I mean, I, I need you to think about this, but I mean, uh, it's quite a boring answer, but I'm quite good at sprinting because I'm quite fast in a short, um, in a short race, but as soon as it goes beyond 400 meters, I just can't go in anymore because I'm very bad pacing myself. Something I'm good at is reading because I'm good at writing. I'm good at math because I can do algebra and very hard sums. Um, I'm good at the drums because I've had lessons. And the reason why I like le the lessons is because there's um, a big cause coffee tea with them. I'm good at basketball because I'm tall and it's easier for me to get it into a hoop. I think I'm good at um, balling and maths because um, for balling I think I'm talented and for maths I think I can do maths pretty quickly. I I think I am very good at swimming, um, some sports like tennis, basketball. I'm good. I think I'm good at writing and maths, and I think I'm also good cycling. Um, and most other sports. Things I like about myself include being friendly and kind to new people I meet. Every day my mum asks whom I made smile today. Kindness is important. What I like about myself. Um, you know, I'm pretty happy with myself and um, you know, everything really. Um, hopefully I can take off my campaigning to the next level, but yeah, I'm happy. What I like about myself is my hair because I like the colour of it. What I like about myself is my scooting skills. I like, um, what I like about myself is my hair because it's fluffy. The thing I like about myself is that I enjoy swimming and it's fun. What I like about myself is that I like things that no one else does and, and that I like Mario Cross but no one else likes it. One thing I like to get better at, um, uh, be cooking, cooking in general because, um, no, I can cook a small meal like um not too fancy just pasta and um you know a bit like that but not any Gordon Ramsay type meals but I'd love to um be better at cooking one day. Things I would like to improve are my handwriting as I am a left-handed person and pens are designed for right-handed people. I need to improve my times tables because I'm not very good at them. I would like to get better at my handwriting because at the moment my handwriting is a bit scruffy. The thing I like to get better at is art because it would be fun to draw more pictures better. I want to get better at facing scary things such as scary video games or or um, scary games that are like in real life and I also want to achieve sports skills and I want to achieve getting better at sports. I'm proud of how I worked at school. I'm proud of how um, I got started the week. I'm proud of getting to the top 10 out of 300 schools in a national maths competition. I then got a certificate for being a good player in the event. Something I'm proud of is my handwriting because I think I've improved over the years. I'm um, proud of myself because I've accomplished most of my the things I want to do in life. I'm proud of my maths work because I've done loads. I am very proud of my my quest for the golden bookmark, my sports skills such as basketball and tennis, and I'm and I'm very very um, grateful for my reading.
Wow, loads of brilliant ideas there for you. So you've got lots and lots of inspiration. Right now, it really is, it's your turn. Um, have a think about your reflection. We do have a, a worksheet to help you with this as well. That's in your RSE pack, uh, which has got the four mirrors and the four questions that go along with that. So just as a reminder, those four questions are, what am I good at? Uh, what do I like about myself? Nearly forgot that one there. Uh, what would I like to get better at? And what am I proud of? So those are your four questions. And do remember to talk to each other afterwards uh, about your, your different answers as well, uh, as this is a really good way to acknowledge and celebrate our differences and, and the fact that, you know, it's, it's brilliant and it's beautiful, the fact that we will all be unique and special and we'll all have different things that we're good at um, and that we're proud of and we'd like to get better at, etc. Don't go just yet. First of all, well done and, and thank you for taking part and reflecting on who you are. Hopefully by doing this, you can really celebrate and appreciate just how brilliant you are, really. Um, because really, that is at the heart of the kind of self-belief and strength that you're about to see in these amazing young people. They're both so inspiring and will hopefully encourage you to believe in yourself and to follow your dreams. Hi guys. Hi Olivia, so I hear you're a massive football fan. When I was younger I got taken to a football match and when I was four I started playing football and I really loved it. I could only play for a boys team as there wasn't many girls teams. How did you find it playing alongside the boys? I wouldn't get past two. I was punched by a boy as he didn't like a girl being better than him. Well, that sounds a bit harsh, what did you do about it? I'm campaigning for equality in football. I'm wanting to coach young girls to inspire them to play football when they grow up. I believe that at every primary school that they should have a girls football team like they do boys teams. That's really cool. Yeah, I mean, what would your advice be to other young people? I'd just say believe in yourself because no matter what you want to do, you can do it if you dream. Wow, that's so true. Well, that's a really great campaign. Thanks, Olivia. Thanks for having me. Bye. 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 A really inspirational example, I think, to, to us all. So, who have you got next, Elise? Next, I've got Jacob, who's a top sportsman. Hi, Jacob. Hi, guys. Loving the bling. What are they? The swimming medals. This one's for several parts of the World Games, and this one was for CP Nationals. Yeah, I mean, I can see loads more behind you. How many do you have in total? I've got over 120, I should say. My favourite medal is the several parts of the World Games because that means so much to me because I know because of my disability, as a swimmer, I come out second in the world, in the world, so I'm very proud of that. Yeah, I mean, that's incredible. So can you tell us a little bit more about cerebral palsy and what causes it? So when I was there, my left side was starved of oxygen, which controls my right side, my body, so my right arm, my right leg. That means I'm less mobile than an able-bodied person. How did it affect you? When I was at primary school, I used to not be able to carry my tray because my hand would shake a lot. And when we were playing in the playground, when I used to run, I used to just always trip because my right leg would be slower than my left leg. Luckily, I had friends that supported me. They would carry my tray for me because they knew I'd struggle with it. So what's your goal? My ambition for swimming is just to be the world champion in 2024. Watch out for my name, Jacob. Well, we're sure you'll do it. Do you have any other advice for other young people? Be yourself, because no one else can be like you. And own yourself, because you are you, and you are beautiful. Oh, that's some lovely advice. Thanks, Jacob. Bye. Yeah. Bye. See you later. Wow, what inspirational kids, am I right? Yeah, they're not letting anything get in their way. They're just doing what they want to do. And being who they want to be. Oh, kind of sounds like song lyrics. Like, oh, <laughs> Fabulous film. Thank you to Discovery Education for making today possible uh, and for all the wonderful inspiration in that film. Um, we've got a busy timetable for the rest of the afternoon and here it is. We've just seen See Me for Who I Am, the Reflection Workshop with the Discovery Education Health and Relationships team. And coming up, we've got a fantastic workshop uh, with Elaine Winter, 
around friendship sculptures, followed by our last live link of the day with Oakfield School in Nottingham. Really looking forward to that. A chance to see the faces of RSE Day film just after two o'clock, followed by a songwriting workshop with the Freedom Foundation. Don't miss that. And don't miss story time with Sid from CBeebies at 4 at 2.30. Um, to finish the day, we'll be showing a, a gallery of all your work, a chance for us to sit back, relax, uh, and enjoy looking at all the work that's been going off to finish the day. Uh, and don't forget, there's still time to send us in using our socials, which are our hashtag RSE Day, or you can um, come in by email, rshe at nottinghamcity.gov.uk. And of course, go to www.rseday.com for all the resources. And if you're only just joining us uh, for the afternoon session, if you've not been around for the morning, well, you can catch up after today's show. The live stream will all be recorded and available through rseday.com uh, and also through Challenge Nottingham. .co.uk. I'm John. I'm hosting the show today with our fantastic studio team here in Nottingham, celebrating RSE Day and celebrating all the learning about safe and healthy relationships that goes on in schools and families and organisations all year round, of course. It's an all year round thing. But uh, today's the day that we really celebrate. And we've been celebrating in style with activities happening in primary, in secondary, in community groups, in health projects across the country. Um, I've got a shout out here for Lakeside Primary in Tamworth. Well done, Lakeside Primary. And also for Wandsbeck in Hull. Fantastic to have you with us. Uh, Linton Primary as well. Big hello to Linton Primary. Um, I hope you're cheering back when I give you a shout out. Uh, there's still time. If you want a shout out today, uh, send in your shout out request and we'll try and feature you. And meanwhile, we've had loads of submissions on our social media links uh, and we're going to show you a few now um our friendship tree project has been well uh, it's been fantastic response to that chilton primary and hull they're creating leaves for the friendship tree and so are ravenshead uh, c of e school in nottinghamshire they've put theirs in the entrance hall to the school. Well done, Ravenshead CV. Fantastic stuff. Uh, Briggs and Gorry uh, are celebrating, and Class 3 ABSG are, are working there. Uh, Fairfield School, Ahmed and Adnan uh, are working really hard to decorate biscuits as part of their RSE Day celebrations, and quite rightly, you've enjoyed eating them as well. Um, well, elsewhere at Fairfield School, they're also making pizza faces big food theme at fairfield school that sounds fantastic and the glebe primary they've been making the emotions cube the dice that we were making early on with catherine thinking about how the cube can help us show different emotions and use that to get us talking glad you're enjoying that henry whipple well year two they've been creating their own friendship tree this morning and watching the assembly uh henry whipple Always involved. Great to have you on board. And St. Joseph's School in Gaul, they've made a fantastic friendship tree. A good friend is all the things on those leaves and so colourful with greens and browns and gold in there. That looks stunning. Well, a good friend loves you more than cake. So say Team Phoenix at Hamsweight. That's quite an emotion, but I think that's right as well. A good friend loves you more than cake. Year five at Chilton Primary. A list of things that friendship means with things like being helpful, not being mean, being nice, don't be a bully, and show respect and show that you care. Those are really important values Chilton Primary are picking out there. I really like that. Um, some lovely leaves for the friendship tree from Upton upon Seven Primary School in Worcestershire. Great to see those there. While Morriston Primary, they've been creating self-portraits with positive messages about themselves. Look at that really colourful display. Well done, Morriston Primary. Fantastic. Right. Another activity. Friendship Sculptures, made by Elaine Winter. Now, Elaine Winter is a Nottinghamshire-based artist. She works with sculptures and traditional and experimental printmaking, uh, all sorts of arts and crafts. And Elaine is going to be showing us how to make shape models of people that help us celebrate 
differences, our identities, the things that make us special, make us who we are, and how we relate to one another. So uh, enjoy some creating and making with Elaine in the Friendship Sculptures Workshop. Hello, I'm Elaine Winter. I'm an artist who works in Nottingham and around Nottinghamshire. And I'm here today to talk you through an art activity which is going to relate to RSE Day. I hope you're having a brilliant RSE Day. It's great that you could join us today. Um, the activity that we are going to do together today is making some very simple cardboard models using some very simple um, sculptural techniques and also using some other materials as well. But the main reason we're doing it is we're thinking today about caring friendships, the qualities that make a really great friend, things like trusting each other, being generous and kind to each other, um, supporting each other when we're feeling a little bit, you know, like we need that extra bit of support. Um, lots of things that we're going to think about that and we're going to demonstrate those qualities by thinking about the friends that are special to us in our lives, but also thinking how it would feel for a friend to join our caring friendship group that we have established already and how we'd welcome them in. So all our models today are going to have our arms outstretched because we're going to think about not excluding anyone, including them. And we're also going to think about how that's a kind of symbol for supporting each other through difficult times and for reaching out to each other and being there for each other, which is what caring friendships is all about, really, isn't it? About sharing interests, experiences, being there for each other. Um, and that's a wonderful thing. So I've made some earlier. You can see they're all quite different. These two are made from cardboard alone, but obviously they've been decorated with some felt tip pens. These two are made in different ways. And we'll talk about that as we go through, because the challenge today is to make some models that relate to our caring friendship group. So you might have lots of friends. You might have more than two or three friends that you consider your good friends in that group. But perhaps think about just doing two or three. If you've only got one caring friend that you think is the important friend to you, that's fine. But why not do a little model of yourself as well? You could do a little model of yourself anyway. But it depends on how much time you have today and how many resources you have. So let's talk about the materials. Um, I'll just put these to one side. So you can see there are some that are made this way. And then the other materials, we're going to make an extra person, a new person. I'm going to talk about that as we make them. You can see they're a little bit wobbly. There's a reason for that, because I think sometimes with friends as well, we do feel stronger when we're together, don't we? So that's something we're going to think about as we're making them. So I'm going to put them to one side and just talk you through the materials and also how to make these ones first. So I'll just put those to one side too. And the materials you need today are, so something like breakfast cereal cardboard is great because it's not too strong. Um, so you can still cut it with scissors, which you will need. Um, we're going to do all the felt tip work on the blank side, not on the side that's printed because that's a bit shiny in it. It won't stay on there. So we're going to use that side to draw on. Um, you will also need a pencil to draw around the template. A ruler might come in handy. See how you go with that. You might need that. Felt tip pens are really useful for decorating. And then when we come to do the other ones, you might need some other materials. So uh, aluminium foil is great. You if you haven't got aluminium foil, don't worry, because it's not always something we have at hand and you may need to find out if you can use it. Old newspaper is great. Um, this is masking tape, which is particularly great, but if you haven't got masking tape, sell tape will do and any kind of extra bits that you might want to use for decorating, in which case a print stick might be handy, but we'll come to that. But on the website, you should have found a template which give you a very basic um, figure, which you can use to make the very first one. So these lovely cardboard figures. And I have 
just to save time, drawn round one to show you how it will look. So I've drawn on the plain side of the cardboard and I've done it in pen just so that you can see a little bit better. Now, the thing is, all the solid lines on your template are the ones that you cut out and the dotted lines are the ones that we're going to fold. So try your best not to cut through the dotted ones. So I'm just going to cut that out quite quickly. And while I'm cutting it out, I want you to think a little bit about how you're going to make your friends really look like who they are. So what I mean by that is we often choose our friends by, we might have shared interests. So we might both be into a type of sport. We might be just really into reading. It might be all manner of things. We might be in a club together. So it might be like a, a club where you learn how to dance or something like that. And then we get to know more about each other. And that's how we develop into a stronger friendship. So it can be to do with the fact that we share experiences. And some of those things are what our friendships kind of get um, nourished by in a way. They get nourished by the fact that we do things together. So when you're doing your friend, so when I did my friend here, she's really sporty. So I put her in a tracksuit so that you can see that's what brought us together if you like because we both really liked sport so it could be something like that it could be a team it could be anything so think about what characterizes that friend it might be something to do with their culture their heritage so all of these things are really useful so as you can see i'm cutting out around the solid lines remember just the solid lines now the hands unless you're really good with your scissors it's a bit tricky to do all the fingers so it's very absolutely fine just to do a kind of um, a symbolic hand if you like an approximation of the hand and then you can always draw on the detail because to cut it out with scissors and get all those fingers in the detail is quite tricky isn't it through cardboard so now when we do this that's it that's all the way around the edge I'm going to put that out of the way save your spare cardboard you might need that for something else so I'm going to show you in a minute so this one, you'll see, looks like their feet are really out of proportion, doesn't it? Look like their feet are too big. It's not, they're a little bit bigger than normal. But that's because we're trying to make them stand up, we're trying to make them strong and self-supporting, but also able to support each other. So I'm just going to go, I've got some more solid lines to cut out. And I've done this one a little bit different to the others that I showed you earlier. So when you get your template, you'll notice that you can adapt whether you want your person to have a long skirt or dress like this one, or if you want your person to have trousers like this one, you can cut more of an upside down V shape. I'm going to do like a school length skirt on this one. So she's going to have that kind of shape cut out there. So you can see that's where the skirt will go. So I'm just going to quickly cut that out so you can see. Now we're going to see if we can make her stand up. So on that, you know, when you're doing this as well, we want these to stand up really well so that they can support other people as well. That's the fold there. So the dotted line, I'm going to fold back like that. And that makes a little like tab like that. And same here. And then you've basically got, and here, folded line dotted line there so we're going to fold that now if I try and make this is often the problem with sculpture it's kind of getting the balance right and isn't that true also we all need to get the balance right in our lives sometimes so let's try again ah great so managed to stand now what did I do differently what I did is I just put my thumbs here on the back and kind of eased it round so that you're shaping the middle bit here and all that's doing is rebalancing where the weight is and it makes it a little bit easier to stand hopefully yes now you might overdo it in which case you need to bring your arms forward a bit and that's really welcoming isn't it so that's kind of nice as well now when you've got to that stage you can then get some felt tips and decide how you're going to 
make that really look like your friend, what it is about them as well, not just about how they look, but what it is about them as a friend. So it might be that you both share an interest in something and you could demonstrate that by making a little thing from spare cardboard. So if it's a uh, an instrument that you both play, you can make a little instrument and, and stick that on as well. And this is where your glue stick might be handy. Now, when you've done that and you start using the felt tip pens, you will be working flat. So when you put them back up, you might need to redo that thing to make them stand. Okay, so how do you make? You're gonna make your little friendship group like that. But then we want to make a new little model as well. So this is someone new coming into the group, if you like. They might be someone new to the class. They might be someone new to the community. They might be feeling a little bit unsure of themselves. They feel different. And we're going to demonstrate that they feel a little bit different by making them out of different materials. So I'm going to show you how to make one out of foil. And you need to pair 20 centimetres or so, and you can just tear it, or you can use scissors, about 20 centimetres again, so two lots of that, and it doesn't matter if it tears in a slightly wonky way, that's fine, don't worry about that. And all we're going to do with this is we're going to make some legs, first of all, so I'm going to scrunch it like that. Just squeeze it with your hands. These are your sculpting tools today, so you're not using anything other than our fantastic hands. And then you're going to make an upside V shape, upside down V shape like that, and quite big feet, so it's quite stable, because these will be tricky to stand if we don't make big feet. We had quite big feet on our other one, so it's fine. And that is going to be your legs. And then for your body, we're going to make out of here, we're going to have a head, arms, again, reaching out, welcoming in, and um, a torso as well. So that's this bit of our body. So I'm going to start off by in the middle of here, crunching like that. And then I'm going to tear along here. Sorry if this gets a bit noisy. Tin foil is a bit noisy. It's quite quick though. And I'm going to squeeze the two arms like that. You see I've got the head and two arms. Now at this point, if I wanted to have quite a dramatic skirt, I could just squeeze that onto there. I'm going to make mine into something which is more approximately like somebody wearing trousers. And I'm going to squeeze it on with tin foil. It's absolutely fantastic material to work with. So that's one way of doing it. And that person, ah, oh, feeling very wobbly, needs some support from some new friends possibly. So feeling a little bit out of, out of, oh, let's try again. Hopefully they'll stand on their own, but they might need a little bit of support from one of these people who might reach out to them and include them in the group. So. Let's think about another way. If you haven't got foil, another material which is great to use is newspaper, but you do need a bit of tape for this. So I'm just going to show you very briefly what you can make. So I think I showed you this little friend earlier on, and she's still in progress. She's still got some things um, to possibly have added to her. She could do some hair and so on. But I thought I'd show you where she's up to. She's got some cardboard from a cereal box for her outstretched arms. And her body is made out of a mixture of things. So she's got newspaper and tape scrunched up for her body, but she's also got some cardboard for her legs. Now, the cardboard, you can work out probably how to do that. I've also put um, some tissue paper on it to make her start looking like she's got a green dress on. When you're using newspaper to make part of a body, if you have got tape, get a couple of bits of tape ready. So you don't need long bits, just small bits like this. And I like to put them on the edge of a table. Don't put them down flat. You want to be able to retrieve them. And then scrunch the paper. Almost like you're going to throw it away, but you're not going to make something 3D out of it. 
and that could be the body of a person. And if you wanted to make the head, you can do a similar technique. A little bit of tape on that and just hold it, give it a good squeeze like that. Good for your hands to do that as well. And then if you want to make the body, uh, sorry, the head, perhaps a little less paper, so a slightly smaller bit, and this time crunch it, give it a roll around to make a ball like that. A bit more tape, you probably don't need as much because it's a smaller shape, like that. And that could give you head and a body shape. Now, you can decide how to use the bits of cardboard that you might have around. You might decide to cut that down and make some, some legs that you could then attach. You could wrap around like that. Think about ways of improving that, changing it, but it's still gonna be a different method. So you're learning two ways of making some models of your caring friends and also a new friend that's going to come into you. So that's your challenge. You're going to make some models from cardboard. So using the template that I showed you and I'm going to arrange those. You might have two or three, you might have more if you have more time, see how you get on. If you have lots of time, you could add some other things to them. So if you've got some things like tissue paper, I've got some straws as well, which are really good because they can actually help strengthen them. So card straws are quite good. Things like food wrappers, sweet wrappers can be quite great as well because you can, you can add things as well, but basically felt it pens is fine. Um, and so you can see this is one that hasn't been decorated. So you put them in. Now, if they are still a bit wobbly, and you can see that that can be the case, even with these ones. I want to show you a little trick. On the back of here, I used a bit of my spare cardboard just to make an extra support for the back of the leg. So you can take a little strip like that and just put that on. So they're quite stable. These three know each other really well. But somebody new has arrived from a different school from a different area. They might not even speak the same language as these guys, but they really want to get to know each other. And I'm just gonna wobble the table and see how they're all feeling. Are they feeling strong? They're a bit wobbly. This one particularly is a bit wobbly actually. So sometimes we have to think about when we have got a really strong friendship group of our own, it is quite nice to welcome in a new friend and reach out to them and think about, you know, ways of making them feel welcome, making, be kind to them, be generous, maybe share something with them, see how they are, check in on them. Um, let's see how this new friend, see this, this new, away from the group, not as stable. We all have wobbles, even in our friendship groups, even in the ones that we know really well. Sometimes we have wobbles, we have difficult times that we have to work out. And that's when we talk to each other again, we work out whatever it is that's caused a bit of a, 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 an issue, and then we can work through it and be friends again. So let's have a look, see how this one is feeling, feeling quite wobbly. So would like some support from this group, I'm sure. And yes, looking forward, looking happy, looking pleased to see them, but also probably feeling a little bit like I need to be a bit closer. So just to think about that today, we have got a lovely challenge here, which is learning a little bit about sculpture. It's an art challenge. Sculpture is quite difficult because it's all about creating balance and you know, you've got to think about, the, about the, the shape of things, the form of things, how much they weigh, how they're going to stick together. So you've got all those things to think about. But equally, we're also thinking more than anything about our friendships, what our good friendships mean to us and how to include new people into that. So I hope that's given you some great ideas for today. Enjoy the rest of your RSD day. I'm sure there are lots of other things that you're thinking about and think about 
keep thinking about your friends and how you can keep being great friends to each other and how you respect each other, trust each other um, and support each other. A bit like these little cardboard creatures here are supporting each other. Thanks very much. Take care. Bye bye. Thanks, Elaine. What fantastic paper sculptures. I hope you had fun making those. And if you didn't finish, and I didn't finish making mine in the studio, carry on. Carry on making them. You'll be able to find Elaine's workshop, plus all the other workshops that we've been running today on our rseday.com resource link. Uh, if you go into there, you can find all the resources you need to carry on doing the activities that we've been covering today and by goodness we've been doing lots of activities and our map of RSE day has been filling up steadily throughout the day. Um, I'm going to be visiting the map one more time before we finish the program today so this is your last chance. If you want a, a sticker to show where you are on the RSE day map Get it to us as quickly as you can, uh, and we'll feature it before the end of the day. And you can see, well, we've got Scotland and the northeast. We've got the northwest and Yorkshire, um, Humberside, all the way through the Midlands, schools and organisations taking part, East Anglia in Wales, London in the southeast, and down in the southwest. So all over the country. But if, if you're not on this map yet, and if you're in a part of the country which is a little bit bare at the moment, um, send us in a shout out. Tell us where you are and put a sticker. Actually, I realise I haven't got my sticker on there either. Um, I'll do that before the end of the day. Now... Uh, Radford Academy, um, they've been looking at uh, uh, what a good friend is, and that's the year five group at Radford, so hello to all you lot. Um, well, a good friend is someone with whom you're never alone. It's someone who's always got your back, always supporting you, uh, and always there in front, never talking about you behind your back. That's really important, isn't it, Radford? Um, you always have a friend no matter what. So consistency and reliability. These are things we've been talking about through the day. Um, now, Regency High School in Worcester, they say a good friend is someone who helps you and is always honest. Again, very important to be truthful and honest. And St. Wilfred's, they've been doing some thinking about what a good friend means. Well, a good friend, somebody who holds the door for you. Very practical help, but holding the door for someone. That's what a friend does. Um, someone who um, helps others. Very important that your friends are people who help other people too, not just you. Somebody who helps support you when you're unhappy. So I think that's really good advice from St. Wilfred. Supporting you, helping you, and also being prepared to help other people. Fantastic. Uh, you've still got time. To send us in your shout outs, examples of your work for the gallery, something for us to put on the map. And Lewis is going to flag up all the socials here. So use hashtag RSE Day or email work to rshe at nottinghamcity.gov.uk or go to our website www.rseday.com. Okay. We are approaching uh, our last live link. Before we do, I'm going to give you three quick shout outs. Dale Hill Primary in Ipswich. They're all watching now. So, hi, everybody. Give us a big wave. Give us a big cheer. Um, we've also got Aquith School, Pontefract in Yorkshire. Uh, thank you for joining us. Great to have you on board. Uh, we've also got Horatio and Jacob from Deanwood School. It's wonderful that you're watching too. So thank you for being here on RSE Day. We've had a couple of live links and they've been fantastic with schools around the country. But the last one is close to home for us. Uh, Nottingham, in the Bilborough area of Nottingham, is Oakfield School, uh, a special school providing education for young people with special educational needs and disabilities. A really wonderful, warm uh, and fabulous place to go to, to visit, to be involved with any day of the week, but it's wonderful to have them here with us for RSE Day 2021. I want to say hi to Dion and Shay Quinn, uh, who have joined us from Oakfield School. Hello, welcome to RSE Day 2021. 
Yeah. It's wonderful oh. to see you all here. Um, and I know yeah. that you've all been really busy. You've been doing loads of activities throughout the year, actually, not just for today. Um, and I know that you've got some things to tell us about. And I'm going to ask Shaykor first. Shaykor, can you tell us a bit about what you've been learning in Class 11 at Oakfield School? Should we say hi? Okay, hi. So, Shay Kaur and his classmates have been learning about positive and negative behaviour in relationships. And we've got some photos to have a little look at. And Shay Kaur uses a communication device, which is here. And he's going to use this to tell us what he thinks of these images representing different relationships. So, we're going to have a little look at the first one. Now, we'll hold it up to the screen as well so you can see at home so let's have a little look so what do we think about this relationship do we think it is does it make you feel sad do we think it's a good oh it's a bad relationship Shaykor is saying that that is a bad relationship now I'm going to show him another image and I'll let you have a little look as well so we've got image here to have a little look at and I'll show that to Shaykor Shay Cole, what do you think of this relationship? Boyfriend. Oh, he thinks that this might be between a boyfriend and a girlfriend. boyfriend and a girlfriend. And do you think that this is a good or bad relationship? Good. Do you think that this relationship looks good? How does it make you feel when you look at a relationship like that? How does it make you feel? Happy. 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 Fantastic. Happy. So Happy. Big clap, Shay Cole. That's amazing, Shaykor. Fantastic work. And I, I know that you've worked really hard on that, so well done. And I know somebody else has been working really hard as our reporter at Oakfield School. And that's Siobhan. Hi, hi. Really yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you oh, could you tell us what sort of activities have the school been doing to celebrate RSE Day? Okay, so we're talking about, we're talking about, sorry, but we've got my hair, we've got my eye, me, you see it? Yeah, I see it all. So we've been learning about body parts is one thing, isn't it? So what else have we been learning about? And we are talking about new things. We talk about my people, my hair. But oh, can I just say something, Siobhan? So Siobhan's telling you here, she's got this to show you that we've been learning, some of the children in wheelchairs particularly have been learning about feelings massage they're exploring their feelings yeah. through massage haven't they Siobhan? Yeah. Brilliant. And then I was showing things. You are sitting there. We need I'll show you in here. We got um we got um shall I can I help you with it? Can I just show you a little bit more? Yeah, this is a bit brilliant bit of Siobhan's own work here. And she's been making a relationships tree, as I know lots of people around the country have been as well. So you've been talking about the people that are important in your life, haven't you? Yeah. So who did you pick? Did you pick a couple of people? You um, said that was someone that helps you, a youth worker. And then we talk from the daddy. Your dad. And then we talk from the dog. Are you dog? Yeah, definitely. And uh, you said as well. <laughs> you're a teacher as well. Happy. So these are some of the things that we've been doing at Oakfield School to celebrate RSE Day. Well done, Siobhan. Yeah! <laughs> and Siobhan, do you think you could take a photograph of your friendship tree? and send it to us because I think we'd like to put that in our gallery and also if there are any other friendship trees that people have been making we'd like to see those too yeah we've got lots of friendship trees to send you from across the school right. okay and there's still time Tom to send us your friendship trees so after we've finished talking perhaps um, Siobhan you can go away and take some photographs and uh, yeah. put those onto the website and we'll look at all the friendship trees yes brilliant Thank you. Thank you, Javon. That's great work. And and of course we've also got DeAndre as well. 
Yeah. Hi, Deandre. How are you? Say hi. Say hi. hi. He's coming up to say hi. Oh, yeah. Yeah, give him a wave. Give him a wave and say hi. 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 Welcome to um, RSE Day. Down. And Deandre, <laughs> can you tell us about what you've been learning about today? Well, Michelle's going to tell you a little about the help Deandre out to exactly all yeah. about all the good work that he's been doing. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, Deandre and all of Class 5 have been learning about how to be good friends. So, Deandre has made a poster where he has looked in the mirror and thought about the things that make him a good friend. And he has said that he is good at sharing, he is cheeky, and he is happy. And Deandre also wanted to tell a very good friend of his about why he is such a good friend. So he made a card and told his friend that he smiles, says hello, and is kind. So he is a really good friend to him. And this is Deandre giving the card to his good friend. Deandre, well done. Those are such great examples of how you've got involved. And um, can I ask um, Siobhan, yeah. how are you uh, going to share this with the rest of the school? Do you will you be able to go and do some work in assembly? Will you be able to tell the rest of the school about coming on to a live stream and talking to everybody about the work you've done? So, do you think you might tell in the whole school assembly tomorrow? Will you say about all of the good work you've done? Yeah, I'll try. Yeah, she's going to tell everyone in our whole school assembly tomorrow, tomorrow morning, about all of the good work. Mm. That's wonderful. Now, Tom, yeah. can I ask you, um, with, with all the staff, uh, as well as the students, learning together at Oakfield, how important is it for you as a school to be involved in RSE Day? Mm. Mm. Oh, it's really, really important for us. Mm. It's really, really important. We like to... We teach about relationships, education throughout the year, and it's a really important part of our learning here at Oakfield. Um, and so to celebrate it in such a big way is fantastic. And to have all of the classes and all of the different students across the school involved has just been brilliant. So, yeah, it's really important. And what's been your highlight of the day, Tom? Oh, my highlight of the day. I would say that, I would say that this has been my highlight of the day because I'm so proud of the good work that the students have done. Um, and the fact that they had the confidence to come up here and talk to a big group of people and share their good work. So I would say this has been the highlight of my day. Well, you're fantastic. Uh, and uh, I'd like to ask you to think about this before, before we say goodbye. I've been asking all the schools that we've talked to today to, um, to give me just one word that describes how they feel about Oakfield. And have a think about that for a minute. What word describes... Uh, Oakfield School to you uh, because I know that the school is so important in the community for the city uh, for all the children and all the families uh, involved with Oakfield School there's always a really special aura whenever uh, people go to Oakfield and they always be really smiling uh, it's, a, it's a great place to be and it's really wonderful to have you involved with RSE Day 2021 and, and I'm really sure that you'll carry on working with us and you've got lots to tell us too so I will encourage you to share with us uh, for the rest of today the work that you've been doing we've got our gallery taking place later this afternoon um, in about an hour's time so there's still time for you to send in some pictures uh, send in some friendship leaves and we'll do our best to feature those on our on our gallery so um, to finish off uh, has anybody got, uh, in a word, what Oakfield School means to you? Ooh, we you practice this. Want to tell us a Remember, word. Go on. You said. Uh, together. Sign it to stand up. Together. All together. Together yeah. is the word that. All together. All together. All together. That's brilliant for Siobhan. And. And DeAndre has one that he wants to show you his symbol. Whoa. Just, yeah, good. There we go. Can we see it? Can you see the symbol? Friend, yes. 
Yeah. Grand, really good boys. Shay Cosworth has one as well that you'd like to share. Yeah, I'll just bring you forward a little bit so I know you can hear him. Okay. So, Bird Pujeko, how would you describe Oakfield School? What do you think? Fun. He thinks it's fun. Cool. And cool. We get two words. <laughs> fun <laughs> and cool. <laughs> That's a really great way to describe any school. Friends having a good time all together. Uh, I would suggest any school could have that as a motto, but it especially applies to Oakfield. So well done, everybody. Thank you so much for taking part. It's been wonderful to see you. Um, and I hope to see you again next year on RSC Day 2022. But for now, we're going to say goodbye. And... Uh, <laughs> Thank you. Wow. Oakfield School, uh, one of the many fantastic schools taking part in RSE Day 2021. And there's time now for us to see again uh, the film that we've created, especially for today, which is our uh, Faces of RSE Day, um, a special film made with contributors from across our RSE family talking about love, family and relationships and what it means to them. So enjoy. A good friend is someone who gets you, who you can be yourself with. They're someone who knows what's important to you, uh, knows what makes you laugh, and most importantly, they make time for you. A friend is somebody who sticks with you through the good and the bad times. A good friend is the greatest gift you can have. A good friend is someone who's on your side, but also not afraid to tell you if they think you're in the wrong. Mean. Excited and caring. Caring. So if you were to choose your perfect friend, they would be exciting and caring, is that right? Yeah. Friendship is rewarding and it's good to have someone that you can trust. Good friend is to be kind and caring. Friends are the family that we choose. Friends that like trust, have trust and listen to you and don't talk behind your back and always there for you. Friendship is supporting each other. My friend is the one who a friend is good to play with. A good friend is always there for you, but they also understand that life can get really busy sometimes and that that's okay. A good friend is someone that you can trust. A good friend is someone who listens, offers advice and supports you when needed, but also allows you to have space when you need that too. A good friend is kind, helpful and caring. Good friends do things they like together. A good friend is someone who plays with me. A good friend is someone you can be yourself with. A good friend will be kind and generous, but they'll also be honest with you too. A good friend is someone who really listens to you, so you feel heard and understood. A real friend is one that walks in when the rest of the world walks out. A healthy relationship is where you feel valued, comfortable and able to make your own choices and decisions. I think a healthy relationship is one that makes you happy and that makes the other person happy. A healthy relationship is one where you can truly be yourself. A healthy relationship is something that starts with a healthy relationship with myself. How I value myself, how I treat myself, am I kind to myself? Do I understand who I am? And if I have that, then I think that's the basis for my healthy relationships with others. A healthy relationship is having time for each other, but also feeling comfortable um, when, to talk about anything, absolutely anything, um, saying how you feel about something, giving your opinion on something, um, and just really feeling safe and comfortable with, with that person. A healthy relationship can be with many different people and it's made up of many different characteristics. A healthy relationship is trust and respect between two equals. 
healthy relationship consists of good communication and respect. A healthy relationship is one where independent people agree to respect and love each other while also helping each other become the best versions of themselves that they can be. A good relationship values your friendships. A good relationship lets you be you. A healthy relationship is a place where you feel supported, loved and cared for. A healthy relationship is supporting each other through thick and thin. A healthy relationship is treating each other with respect and kindness. I feel a healthy relationship is based on mutual respect and listening to one another's issues and problems. A healthy relationship is one where there's mutual trust and respect. A healthy relationship is a relationship where the people involved agree to be in it and to the kind of relationship they want to have. A healthy relationship is communicating and deciding what you want from it together. A healthy relationship is caring for each other. A healthy relationship is one that allows you to be you without compromising your values or who you are. A healthy relationship should always make you feel comfortable being the person you want to be. Family is fabulous. Family is unique. Family can be happy. Family can be sad. Family can be fun. Family can be cross. Family can be together. Family can be apart. But family is fabulous and family is unique. And at the Walter Halls family in Nottingham, we're really looking forward to RSE Day and we're going to be fabulous. Family are people around you that love you. Um, they might be people you're related to, but they might not be. Um, but they're the people that you feel safe with and that you can be yourself with. Family is love. Family has been part of a community. My Taylor and Harry are Parfi and Gilead. A family respects and loves each other. My mum gives me sound advice and she guides me if I have any issues or problems that I may have. Family is where you feel safe to be yourself and know that you are loved. Family doesn't have to be biological, it can be an adoptive or fostering family too, like my own. But the important thing is it's where you feel that you matter and belong. Family is ever growing. Family is anyone that you can rely on for safety, support and love and that will care for you when you need it. I think it was Maya Angelou that said, family is the people in your life who want you in theirs and who accept you for who you truly are. Love is phenomenal. Love is knowing someone on a deeper level. Love accepts you for what you are, warts and all. Love is when your partner's little imperfections and foibles become the things you cherish most. Love is something to give to yourself as well as other people. Be proud of who you are. Love is kindness, love is grace. Love is the best thing in the human race. Love is treating someone kindly, then they treat you the same way. Love is something that brings people together. Love is how we are connected. Love is when your mum can't stop telling you that she loves you 500,000 times a day, which can be really annoying. Love is seeing your daddy when you haven't seen him for five months. Love is something that comes from your heart. Heart from hugs come from love. My heart is full of love for my parents. Love can be anywhere, so catch it and keep it when you see it. Love is a special sort of energy. Love is a very special thing. You can't see it, but you can feel it in your heart. Love is an emotional feeling. Love is trusting one another. Love is kind. Love is great. Love is the best. Love is God. Love is feeling safe and a relationship is trusting and talking to one another. Love is really allowing yourself to trust someone but knowing that they'll trust you back in return. I think love is about putting the needs of other people before your own needs. This has been a difficult year 
we've been frightened and we've been forced to do things we wouldn't normally do. In the middle of that time, there's been many people in our city who've considered other people and their needs before their own. And I think that's a really good demonstration of love. Love is kindness and respect. Love is something that shows care and magic. Love is when someone takes care of you, a friend loves you, or your family loves you. A hug is sometimes and sometimes shows love. Love is when you like a person a lot. Love is trust and respect. Love is different for everybody. I think for me, love is about understanding somebody and going through and riding those highs and, and lows with them and uh, just being accepting and understanding each other. Okay, Cyrus, what word comes to mind when I say love? Pa powerful. Love is important for us to know that we are safe, cared for and important. Despite what a lot of people say, love is not unconditional. It's absolutely fine to have reasonable, healthy boundaries and self-respecting conditions like I need my partner to treat me with kindness. It's also okay to leave somebody if they try to bend or break your boundaries because above all, it's important to be loving towards yourself. Still to come on RSC Day 2021, we've got story time with the one and only Sid Sloan. Sid from CBBS, he's back for another story at 2.30. But if you're a music lover, you are going to love this workshop. It's with an organisation based in Nottingham called the Freedom Foundation. Our Freedom Foundation work with children and young people, giving them the opportunity to explore their individuality and also their self-worth. And they help alleviate stress and anxiety, leading to young people feeling more confident about expressing themselves. And that's been a really big part of RSE Day and our ethos about young people having a voice participating, having their say, and developing their sense of self-worth and self-esteem. And the Freedom Foundation are now going to explore that through songwriting in this short songwriting workshop. I hope you're having an amazing RSE day. I hope you enjoy what I have in store for you today. Our activity is songwriting. My name is Ellie and I work for an organisation called Freedom Foundation. We work with children and young people across the country to empower them using street dance, hip hop, singing and songwriting. Today we are going to look at how songwriting can help you express your emotions and speak out about the things that are most important to you or challenge you to reflect on how you feel about yourself and others around you. We all know that the relationship you have with yourself is just as important as the relationship you have with your friends and family. You all need to remember just how amazing you are and you need to learn how to love yourself. One day you're going to feel positive, the next you might not and that's okay. Stand tall, be proud because you're worth it. Many of us spend so much time pulling ourselves down that we don't realise the damage that is doing to our self-confidence and self-worth. You might wish that you were taller, prettier, smarter or faster, but it's so important that you are happy with who you are and not be influenced by what you see on the TV, in the news, on social media, because you are you. Online platforms such as gaming and social media have changed the way we see things. We spend so much time comparing ourselves and our lives to others that we forget about who we are. Just remember that people only post or share what they want others to see. And sometimes that's not reality. How many of you post selfies and constantly check how many likes or comments you receive? You know you don't have to be liked to be liked. How many of you follow celebrities or influencers on YouTube and think, I wish I could look like that. I wish I could be like that. But just be happy with who you are and remember that you are enough. You know the feeling when someone is constantly telling you, you're not good enough, you're never going to succeed and you start to believe it. But you'd never say that to someone else, so 
why do we say it to ourselves? But what if we flip the switch and we say the positive things, we start to install it into ourselves and then we believe it? How would that make us feel? We all have friendship groups and sometimes they can be challenging, but we have to learn and understand that not everyone thinks the same as you. Not everyone feels the same way as you and that's okay. It's about respecting each other and making the other person feel appreciated and valued. Treat people the way you would like to be treated and show them you care. We all deserve to have that one person who gets us, understands us and likes you for who you are and not what you are. So the next time you see someone, smile and say hi. I promise you it will make their day. Try it. It will be great to know that you've made someone feel special and show them that you care. So just remember, friendship groups can be challenging. Not everyone feels the same way as you. Respect each other. Make others feel appreciated and valued. Treat people the way you want to be treated. Show others you care. Find your people and smile and say hi. Right, let's lighten the mood. Everyone, up on your feet. I want you to feel this beat. Let's go. Music. All right, cool. So I want you to feel the music. Just let it flow through your body. You can clap if you like. Or you can stomp your feet. Or just nod your head. Or you can do all three. <laughs> so I want you to feel the music. Just let it flow through your body. You can clap if you like. Or you can stomp your feet. Or just nod your head. Or you can do all three. Okay, so now what I want you to do, keep the rhythm in your head and grab your paper and pen. I want you to think about how you feel about yourself or someone that you follow on social media or someone famous that you look up to. Write some words that describe those thoughts and try and put them together in a sentence. Try to think about words that rhyme with the emotions and try to put them to the beat of the music. So the easiest way to construct a song is by having a verse, another verse, and then a chorus. After that, you just repeat that whole process and do that again. And then, if you want to, you can add a bridge. Now, a bridge is something that's slightly different to the rest of the song, but it's a build-up getting you ready for the final chorus. I'm going to give you an example of how to do it to help you out, so don't worry. Now, you can use any music as a backing track or you could do it without. It's completely up to you. So, what I'm going to do is do a little bit of a verse. What I would like you to do is fill in the blanks. Now you can also use this tool when you're creating your own song. There is no right or wrong, so don't worry. Remember, your words are your words. Your emotions are your emotions. So let's get creative, express yourself, and let's give it a go. Music! Sometimes when I look in the mirror, I don't like what I see. Should I change my hair or the clothes that I or be happy that I am? Did you get it? Cool. Now, before we try it, there's something else that you can think about. Sometimes the rhyming word at the end doesn't need to be exactly the same, but can sound the same, if that makes sense. Let me show you what I mean. Sometimes I try to fit in and be the best that I can be. But I know myself and I know my and I'm happy that I am. So before we move on, let's listen to both of them examples again. Now you've got your pen and paper, whilst you're listening, start writing down some ideas for your own song. Sometimes when I look in the mirror, I don't like what I see. Should I change my hair or the clothes that I, or be happy that I am? Sometimes I try to fit in and be the best that I can be. But I know myself and I know my And I'm happy that I am Sometimes when I look in the mirror I don't like what I see 
Should I change my hair or the clothes that I Or be happy that I am Sometimes I try to fit in and be the best that I can be But I know myself and I know my And I'm happy that I am Sometimes when I look in the mirror I don't like what I see Should I change my hair or the clothes that I Or be happy that I am Sometimes I try to fit in and be the best that I can be But I know myself and I know my And I'm happy that I am Did you get that? Cool, now let's talk about the chorus You may decide to sing this part just to give it a different sound It's completely up to you Or just keep it as a rap What you could also do is find an instrumental backing track from a famous song that has a great chorus that relates to what you're writing about this can then go in between your rap. Sometimes it's easier to write to music that you're familiar with because this makes you feel more comfortable to express how you're really feeling. The chorus needs to be catchy and easy and is the jam and butter in the sandwich. What I mean by that is the verses are the two slices of bread and the chorus is the filling. Music can change the way we feel. Different genres can bring out a range of emotions. Talk to your friends. Share the music that makes you feel good. Now it's time to create your own song or rap. So, just remember, you don't need to be liked to be liked. Think about how celebrities and influencers impact the way you feel. Write down your thoughts. You don't have to rhyme. You can add a bridge. Jam and butter. Have fun. You're amazing. I hope you guys have an amazing RSE day and I'll see you at Freedom Foundation soon. Peace out. Thanks Freedom Foundation. Everyone got songwriting? Everyone feel a bit musical? That's good news. Okay, one more visit to the RSE day map. Very colourful now. Kathy's been busy sticking with your shout-outs. I've got a couple more that have gone on here in the last minute. Uh, Parkside Academy in Ipswich, the Year 10 students there are doing an RSE advice tweet competition. Fantastic world in Parkside Academy, uh, Robin Hood Primary School in Nottingham. We've stuck you on too. Thanks for being with us and wherever you've been today, however you've taken part, we're really grateful that you have made RSE Day what it is. Uh, one more sticker to go on here, and this one is for uh, Lewis and Rob, Glenn and Kathy and me. We're in the studio here. Big round of applause, everybody. Here you go. Studio One at Broadway in Nottingham, bringing you the live stream. And here we go. Let's stick us into a very busy Nottingham. But as you can see, the whole country have taken part. You've all responded to the challenge of how to be involved in RSE Day 2021, promoting safe and healthy relationships with schools, families, and organizations. So well done. A few user submissions to share with you before we go to our final event of the day. And I think we're gonna roll some here. Henry Whipple, they've been showing uh, how they're feeling and serve Oak Tree class. Um, Miss McColgan's team there, Big wave to them, oak tree friendship trees, beautiful ideas shared about what they've done. Uh, and Birchwood CV have been involved too. The year five group have been exploring positive relationships. Branston CV Infant Academy, they've been involved too. They're feeling fabulous, and why not? Miss Speaks class, well, you've been enjoying your RSC day in Chestnut Tree at Ladywood. Um, the qualities of friendship, that's what you've been exploring. I love that. That looks fantastic. Now, my face. That's what Aquith School have been looking at. They've been doing self-portrait work in year four. Loads of positive comments. And that's what the Faces theme was all about, wasn't it? It was about taking a look at yourself and your unique and special you. And then thinking about all the qualities that are in that. Buckingham Primary Academy, a fabulous morning. Discussing emotions, making the emotions cube. That seems to have been very popular. So well done to Catherine Kirk for that fantastic emotions cube. Canon Sharples Nursery. Hello to Canon Sharples. Um, I think you've been feeling, well, maybe sad, maybe a bit angry, confused, uh, and just delighted. I think there's a lot of different faces on there. That's really good emotions on display from Canon Sharples. Henry Whipple, more friendship cubes for RSE Day. Lots of busy work there. Great to see that craft. 
Lakeside Primary. The year one team are enjoying taking part this morning. You've been making eye contact with each other. That's a really important feature of communication, isn't it? Uh, we've got time for a couple more. Some friendship leaves from the Discovery Education Friendship Tree. We've had lots of submissions for that. Keep them coming. There's a Padlet that's growing and growing. And I hope you can all use that to get inspiration about how you can share these ideas uh, with your classmates. Regency High School in Worcester have been sending in good things about good friends. And those are really helpful tips too. Right. We're going to go to our final event of the day and to finish us off before we go to our gallery and a chance to see all that work and more for the last part of the day we're going to have a treat and the treat comes from a good friend of RSE day the one and only Sid from CBBS, who has inspired children and parents, families for a generation with his stories. Uh, and he's got a special story about faces that he's going to bring us. Uh, enjoy Sid's RSE Day story. I know I will. Hello everyone, I've got a brilliant book to read you. It's called The Story of My Face and it's been written by Shervin Yousefian with rhymes by Corey Hills and illustrations by Adam Taylor. Sit back, are you already sitting? Sit down, get comfy, relax and enjoy the story of my face. Maybe it's the story of yours. Have a listen. Left ear and right ear together brought hearing and mouth for the mouth was quite domineering. I won and I too had incredible sight, while nosy the nose smelled all day and all night. One day Mouthful stood tall, and then he proclaimed, Our club needs a leader, a president to be named. You're quite right, agreed. I won and I too. But who will it be? Tell us. Who? 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 Left ear and right ear popped up to attention. We should be president, for did we not mention that we hear what is near and we hear what is far? We listen to friends and they strum on guitars. No, no, said Mouthful, that wouldn't work out. You can't smell or see, you can't give a shout. Feeling quite angry and turning bright red, the ears, embarrassed, picked up and they fled. I won and I too said we should be president. Together we are most insightful residents. We see colours so bright and shapes, oh, so grand, that life without us will be positively bland. Mouthful laughed and said, absolutely not. You sleep and you cry and you twitch quite a lot. I won and I too, with tears in their eyes, packed up their bags and said their goodbyes. Nosy the nose, then sauntered up to speak, but Mouthful interrupted with a boisterous creak. No, no, and no, this cannot be right. You wheeze, you sneeze, you sniff all through the night. Nosy the nose aired a sniffle and a sigh. Shocked by Mouthful's words, he wished he could cry. At last, Mouthful rose and began to boast. I should be president. Let's all make a toast. I can sing. I can eat. I can kiss on the cheek. I can speak. I can laugh. I can... Mouthful stopped suddenly, for no one was there. And there he was left with nothing but chairs. What have I done? My friends are out on their own. Now I am left feeling sad and alone. Mouthful realised he had been mean to his friends. So he set off at once to go make his amends. Outside of the club, many problems arose. The ears kept crashing and Nosy bumped his toes. 
I one and I two couldn't taste, hear or smell, and Mouthful was lonely, abandoned, not well. As luck would have it, on one fateful day, the friends were reunited and had lots to say. I one and I two were the first to speak out. We should restart the club. We haven't a doubt. But who will be president? asked Nosy, sounding sad. For without a leader, things surely go bad. Not true, said Mouthful, causing Nosy to spin. If together we shall work, then together we shall win. Everyone was happy, but finding their place was difficult indeed on a magnificent face. Left and right ear kept jostling and wiggling. Nosy was sneezing and mouthful was giggling. I one and I two were the first to their spot. Ah, oh, this is our place. We have no second thought. Left and right ear then followed in line. One on each side we can hear all the time. Nosy and mouthful then looked at the space. There wasn't much room left up on the face. Mouthful smiled widely and said, let's settle right there, for then we can make an unstoppable pair. All the friends settled in and called this a new start. They made strong vows to never be apart and to value each other inside and out, working together. That's what life is about. I hope you enjoyed that story. I certainly enjoyed reading it to you. I like it because it's all about coming together, isn't it? Being friends, valuing those relationships. No matter who we are or what we have to offer, everyone counts. And together, we are definitely a better team. Now, here's a few facts about the amazing human face. That's yours and mine. It's impossible to hum while your nose is plugged close. Hmm. You always see your nose, but your brain finds a way to ignore it. The smallest bone in your body is called a stirrup, and it is inside your ear. The space between your eyebrows is called the glabula. Humans are capable of making 10,000 unique facial expressions. Hmm, that was about 20, maybe, maybe not. I was running out. 10,000! Wow! Your nose is connected to your memory centre. The average person blinks about 11,500 times per day. And you blink more when you talk. Your ears create more earwax when you are afraid. Now this one's a bit, uh, hmm, unsavoury. During a lifetime, your mouth can produce enough saliva to fill two swimming pools. Ah! Oh! Well, I'll leave those facts for you to think about, and uh, you can find out more about them in The Story of My Face. There's lots more to have a look at in that book. It's a brilliant book. I love it. I hope you loved it too. Uh, it was by um, Shervin Yousefian, rhymes by Corey Hills, and illustrations by Adam Taylor. I've been Sid. Take care. See you again. Thank you, Sid. Always a pleasure to hear your voice and hear your stories. I did say that that was the last time we'd be at the map, but I can't stay away because while Sid's been reading his story, um, we've had just a load more submissions come in and it was impossible not to stick them on. And you can see we've, we've gone very busy in the last hour of RSE Day. And why not? Because you've all been working really hard today. And of course, now's the time you want to be sending in all your work. And of course, we are going to show you in a couple of minutes our gallery reel. And that's a chance for you just to maybe unwind, maybe have some quiet time. You might want to be clearing up in class. But it's an opportunity for us to show as much work as possible that's been coming in through social media, been emailed to us today, and that we're going to feature on a gallery reel, 10 minutes or so, of an opportunity for you just to sit back, enjoy all the work that's been going on. And of course, the work's been going on from Scotland all the way through to the south of England and through Wales, across to the east of the country, through the Midlands and all over. Uh, which just goes to show that learning about safe and healthy relationships with trusted adults in the right setting for you is something that we all need.
and that we all enjoy doing. So we've had some fantastic creative inputs to help us do that today. Uh, this is the evidence of all the activity that's going on. And the other evidence is our gallery show. So I'll be back with you in about 10 minutes just to finish off and say our thank yous and remind you about what you can do next. But for now, just enjoy the 10 minutes of our gallery showreel.
Beautiful. Uh, what a gallery. I could watch that. Lovely soundtrack by Products of the Studio. Thank you for everybody involved in putting that together. And one more shout out. Got in right on the buzzer, this one. Amanda and the young people at CP Riverside, shout out to you. Uh, well done for getting in. And uh, we've had fun with those all day. I hope you've heard yourself mentioned um, and been able to celebrate that along with all the other things that you've been celebrating today time for us to say a, a few thank yous and a, a few things about what you can do next because all of the resources that you've used today uh the, all the links to all the providers all the things which you've been able to take part in they're all available through the website uh, rseday.com so keep visiting that not just today but keep visiting it all the way through the year find these resources do the workshops do the activities Look at the videos again. All this material will be there. And the live stream that we've done today will be available for you to watch back uh, and look at from next week. And you'll be able to do that through the rseday.com website. But you'll also be able to visit challengenottingham.co.uk and watch it there. And don't forget, for our Friendship Tree resource provided by our partners at Discovery Education, you can go and visit that with a Padlet that's been used today to create so many wonderful thoughts and ideas about healthy relationships. And that's at discoveryeducation.co. Dot UK. Um, we are grateful to Discovery Education for their support for today, along with Challenge Nottingham and Nottingham City Council. So thank you to everybody who was involved in that. Um, thank you also to uh, Catherine Kirk, who has been the driving force behind RSE Day uh, and was supported by Andrew Smith at Nottingham City Council and all the work that you've done behind the scenes. And talking about behind the scenes, well, we've had Kathy and Glenn working really hard all day, and even before that, um, putting together all the production that makes this so seamless and smooth up front, uh, as well as our tech wizards. We've got Lewis and Robin Notjo, who are from Lights by Lewis, and they've been making all the tech magic happen. Um, other shout-outs, of course, and thank yous go to all our artists, creators, our writers, all the people who've contributed to the activities, and of course, the children and staff from in King Edward VI School in Lichfield, and from Hampswake Primary in Yorkshire, and from Oakfield School here in Nottingham. Thank you for those wonderful testimonies and contributions live with us on the live link on RSE Day. And of course, most thanks go to you for being here, for watching, for participating, for creating, sending us all those inspiring creative ideas. Without you, RSE Day wouldn't happen, okay? So thank you. Uh, give yourself a big round of applause. I think I can hear one in the studio right now. Well done. Uh, it's been a great pleasure to be with you today. I'm John Ree, and I've been your host at RSE Day 2021. I hope to be your host in RSE Day 2022. And in the meantime, uh, use the resources, keep thinking about safe and healthy relationships. Be a good friend, look after yourself, take care.